Yo, what's going on, people? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Sai TV. We are live for another debate show Friday evening. You know what it is, man. Got a game tomorrow, but means we've got a big, big debate show in the building. Big up to everyone who's locked in. You know what I'm saying? We've got Marcel in the building. Marcel, what are you telling me, bro? Everything blessed. Up, man. Um, I'm, I'm good, bro. I'm good. Um, just looking forward to the debate today. Got a big game coming up. Um, everybody, make sure to like and uh, subscribe to the channel, man. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Griggs, what's New York saying, man? Everything good? It's been raining all week, unfortunately. Well, it's been asked, but otherwise, mm -hmm. doing good. It's Friday, so that's, like, that's another good thing out of the week, pretty much. And yeah, just make sure you guys like, share, subscribe, and I'm sure we're going to have a great debate, as always. Yeah, man, come on, man. Ryan, what are you saying, man? Have been blessed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can't complain, man. Obviously, you know, I've got a game midday yep. kickoff tomorrow, but big up the chat as always. Big up the panel, you know, Marcel, Griggs. I think Marcel might have some questions to answer today, you know. Just, yeah. just to give us a bit of clarity, you know, just to help us mm. you know, understand our, our gaffer, you know. Mm. Just to help us understand, mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> mm. Absolutely, absolutely, man. Listen, hopefully Danny will be joining us soon. I am here, you know what I mean, despite the injury, there's no excuses from me, you know what I mean, I've got a oh, bit of an yeah. ankle injury, so I'm, I, nice. I'm <laughs> out of tomorrow's game, you know what I mean, I I, I, um, I managed to hit a pothole, man, these potholes, man, we pay tax here for no reason in this country, man, but I hit a pothole, and now my ankle is effed, so we won't be at Old Trafford for the first time in... Two years, you know what I'm saying to you. But listen, we will we'll be there regardless. Watch along tomorrow, you know what I'm saying to you. So big up to everyone who's been sending wishes and whatnot. And yeah, man, let's get into the debate show. Ten Hag says we are in the right direction. And I also want to talk about injuries. Is it an excuse for my United's downfall this season? And I want you to really understand and grasp the comment Ten Hag made today, which I thought was. Yeah, man, Mr. Gaslighter. This guy should be called Mr. Gaslighter, not Mr. Tenhag, Mr. <laughs> Gaslighter. He says, we are in the right direction. Imagine we had many more players available and not setbacks and injuries. Could have easily had have 75 wins. Um, you can see there is a bright future with this team. I'll, I'll start with you, Rilo. Um... What's your initial reactions to this comment here, man? Because I can't lie, you know, man. Man said 75 wins here, yeah, but Broski, man said right direction. He's using all these buzzwords, man, but... Say, you've you've, 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 right you've there, even bro. missed out the word that stuck out the most for me. Imagine. Imagine your gaffer, the, imagine, the guy yeah. you're meant to have belief in, tells you to imagine. Like, he wants us to imagine. That That is crazy. Like, And do you know what it is? Like, mm. I feel like a comment like that, it's normally when you're just joking around with the players behind the scenes. You're like, raw man, them, imagine if did it. But you don't come out on a yeah. press conference, especially when, you know, a lot of us, or should I say majority of us, are having serious doubts about the direction of this club that you keep stating is in the right direction, that, that the vision is clear. Like, at least help us to envision this envision. Envision this vision, you know what I'm saying? So, mm. I don't know. I'm very concerned. Him in a press conference telling us to imagine is is, is alarming mm. for me because it's like, so are you now telling us that this is what we need to do for the rest of the season, just to imagine what it could be? And then we have our hopes that if that was it, then that that's not realistic. So, wh where do we go from here, man? So, week after week, all of these statements... They're very, they seem very, very concerning. They seem very, I want to be polite to him. They seem very, he seems very delusional, to be honest. From when he's telling us to imagine, he must be imagining himself. And that's mad to me, man. So, like, you know, we've seen a lot of clubs. I know there's so many debates that we have with this whole injuries thing. And one thing I can honestly agree with, should I call him the Ten Hag Inners, is that he mm. hasn't been able to have his first 11 team and practice with them constant, consistently. I understand that. But my issue is, mm. you're a manager that came in and said injuries are part of the game. You're a manager that came in and said um, errors come to an end. So at the end of the day, right. you've got experience from Ajax. You've been in the Champions League. If you know injuries are part of the game, you should have then set up a system so that in just in case these so injuries happen. You know what I'm saying? So if he did instill his system from the start, 
And obviously he changed it after the Brentford and Brighton game, understandably, to get the results. But he didn't kind of build on it at the same time. You know, you're going to have this problem. You set your foundation. Like I said, if it's a garden, you set the, the, um, the soil under, the grass, and then now you choose where the flowers go. But now he's like, he's doing a bit of both. So certain flowers are just growing in random places. Then he's doing the under bit as well. It's just confusing. If you set the foundation at first and then the flower like Hoyland's missing, everyone knows what that Hoyland flower does. So you just replace it. But what he does now is instead of just replacing just Hoyland, he will rather shift Rashford from his good side on the left, put him in the middle. Then he will shift Garnacho from his best side on the right, put him on the left. Then he will put Bruno from his best side, best position in 10, put him on the right. And then well, you're moving all of these pegs to for what? So for me, that's very, that's, it's, it's concerning. But And then on top of that, when you've got the right wing space that's free, you're not putting a right winger there. So you're putting three of your best players in their worst positions just to compromise one position it's it's very confusing so i will keep keep on imagining i'll imagine ten hog that these 10 games we have left you get 30 points and i'll just keep imagining because that's all i can do daydream let's let's call this daydream let's sit here guys and just keep quiet close our eyes and daydream because that's the only thing that feels so good but then as soon as i open my eyes i'm back to life Back yeah. to reality. See, yeah. <laughs> you see, so I don't know, man. But yeah, no, that's that's it for me, man. Mm. Big up, man. Craig says breaking loose. Tell and Snoop Dogg have the same deal off. Hopefully, Ilios finds hyenas and no trap. Bro, I'm telling you, man. He's <laughs> he's gone to Holland, man, and and gonna get that that weed, yeah, man, because he's been missing it, bro. I'm telling you that <laughs> dank, man, because I you don't separate. Like before, I get to you, master. Like if Griggs, man, like you know what I mean. Like seventy five wins. You can even be on seventy five wins. Like at least make a. A realistic target. Man said <laughs> 75 wins, oh, you know. He's at, 60, <laughs> he's at 61 in his first 100. That's the record. Um, So he's saying that he'd be at 75 out of the first 100 by, if it wasn't for injuries. Oh. I'm not going to lie. Everything Ten Hag says in a press conference goes in one year and out the year, and out the other right yeah. now for me. I don't believe anything he says. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing maybe this was a little bit like kind of more of a little lighthearted joke that he was trying to make, but he's not really a joking kind of person. So you can't really... You don't know with Ten Hag. You don't know what's a joke, and you don't know what's like what he actually means because he he has a very set, uh, dry sense of humor. He's not a funny guy. Let's be serious. The guy is he's a pretty. He looks like a pretty serious guy. He, he can't make jokes. He's not a comedian. Um, he's not like a pep. No, it's not. Everything everything Pep says, you you can laugh at because you can either, you can take it either side. With Ten Hag, it's take mostly serious. But the injury stuff, I hear it. Like I understand that yes, you could be doing better with if you had healthy players. I understand, but football is a sport that most teams do not have. Majority of the, have like a, a full starting eleven for most of the season, unless you're Liverpool and you allegedly did some stuff, right? Other than those, and other than that football club, you most people have injuries. Um, could the death be better? Yes, that would that would have helped a lot. Obviously, we have a, mm. we have a severe drop off when it comes to certain positions. And I'll give him the break in terms of, like, the defense. But I don't know if we're going to talk about this later, but it's also, like, when you know you have a squad that has a lot of injuries. My issue is not the injuries. It's, like, how constantly these injuries are happening. And, like, these are not – like, mm. it's not the players only suffering one injury per year and they come back and they're fine. It's, like, they're getting, they're getting injured about three, four times a year. Rashford has picked up, like, three, four different knocks this year. Holden has had two different knocks this year. Luke Shaw mm. has had four different knocks this year. Leach has had the same injury twice. Malasia, I don't know where the guy is. You guys live oh, in England. Have you goodness. seen Malasia in Manchester? Is he is he in no, Manchester? Hey, you're local. Have you seen this guy? Bro, listen, I don't know where he is. Don't know where he is. Don't know what he's Mason doing. Mason Mount has Apparently been on the bike be. for the last two months. I've seen Mason Mount pedal on the bike in training for the last two months. I haven't seen him on the pitch though. I haven't seen oh, him yeah, on the same. Back. Apparently he's, he's coming back soon. Gym, I don't see him on the but yeah, he's back after, after international, international break. break. <laughs> yeah. But, so that's what he's coming home by then. <laughs> but I don't know. I, I'm an, um, I'm not only gonna blame Ten Hag. I need to know about what the medical department are doing, what the fitness, what the fitness is. But like the, the fact that he saw the fact when he said last week was like, I think for the Hoyland injury, this is due to high intensity press training. Then if that's if we're gonna pick up injuries like that in training to our core players, then the training methods are wrong. Mm. Yeah. I think I think Potch has caught um uh, he for this at Chelsea. Apparently he does a very intense training session the day before the match. Oh shit. So 
that leads to players like that, that could that it's, so, it's those kind of minuscule like things that happen that can ruin you on a match day. So I think with Ten Hag, we really have to just we just have the old overall thing. I understand why he, I understand why he's complaining about injury. Every manager complains about injuries, by the way. He's not the first one. Klopp complains about injuries all the time. I'm sure Pep has complained mm. about injuries. Arteta has complained about injuries. He's not the first one to do it. It's just the fact that we're really struggling right now. So for me, I I tweeted this earlier. Not everyday excuses. Sometimes just take accountability. I would I'd rather Ten Hag just say a lot. Like he keeps talking, but he I know it's okay to like it's you need to speak positive after a game. Like even after the Manchester Derby, but sometimes mm. I don't need positivity. Sometimes I just need bluntness. Just say we were shit or we weren't good enough. Just say that. Like just 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 mm. say just keep it a hundred. That's about it. Not everyday positivity and stuff like that. I don't really want that at this point because we're set. We're sixth place. We have a negative goal difference. We're basically in middle of March. It's not going well. There's no there's no right direction to say. We've had a bad season. We need to really we need to reanalyze the situation and see how can we improve to end the season and then head into next year and how we can really go move on forward. I think that's what he needs to say to if he wants to get any remorse from majority of the fan base. Because let's be real, he's lost most of them, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Facts, man. Well, let's hear from the Tanakh spokesman, um, Mr. Marcel. <laughs> you know what I mean? Let's hear what he meant, what he was trying to say. Have we misjudged it? Have we misinterpreted it? Like, Marcel, chat to us, man. First of all, do you agree with <laughs> he would get 75 wins? Well, well, firstly, I haven't seen the presser. Um, so I'm I'm just going to go off what, I've, what I usually watch and I'll hopefully watch it at some point uh, t- tonight. But... I think if, if Briggs has said 61 wins, that's only 14 more. And is he talking about over the course of 100 games? That's both yeah. seasons. That's yeah. over the course of both seasons. That that doesn't seem outside of the realm of possibility to me. So it seems that he's been very meticulous in terms, in, ter- in terms of his thinking. And if somebody was to question him further as to as of which those 14 games were, I'm pretty sure he could at least name 10 of you, so uh, uh, 10 of them. So for me, uh, not outside the realm of possibility. Uh, um, and the injuries for me have been mitigating circumstances. I don't think we can put them into this excuse category yet. Or, or it's gone beyond the excuse category, should I say. Because, you know, there's a line for everything. You know, within a season, yes, out of your 25, 25-man squad, players will get injured. That's a fact. In every single cl- mm. uh, club, they, they suffer that. But for me, I think there, there becomes a line where it's just too much. They're always in life. There's always a line where that's just too much now. That is that is going to be a big issue, and and Ten Hag definitely reached that point this season. And like what you both said, the amount of times the reoccurring injuries. Even if we want to go into that and delve into that, this reoccurring injury thing, a percentage of that has to go on the player. A percentage of that has to go on the medical team, and then finally a percentage of that goes on the manager. I don't think you can give all the blame upon the manager. There's plenty of times where footballers want to play and they're injured. They're going to suffer and risk their body to get on that football pitch. So wh- whose fault is it then? You know, you, you've got to give a percentage to things. And, and that's just how I like to do it. So for me, um, the, the quality of the squad, you know, and in terms of what you're saying there, Griggs, in terms of the honesty, you know, I think Ten Hag gets the opportunity to honour out his contract. And with that, I don't think you have, you cannot be mismanaging the team by saying we're shit. You cannot go out there and tell and 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 brandish your whole twenty-five man squad and say we're shit and we're inferior. Honestly, that's, what, that's, that. that's for that's for someone like me to do. That's for that's for someone like me. that's for what that's what we're here for. We've been telling. I've been saying to you guys for the longest. This twenty-five man squad is not superior to Man City's machine for machine. It's not machine for machine against Liverpool. It's not even even Spurs. You could even say you know just and 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 a couple and Aston Villa. I've said Aston Villa. I've said Aston Villa squad. Is better than ours, and when you have these sorts of predicaments, where are you expecting your manager to end up in the table? And and for me, the two words come into mind: process and what Ole's mentioned, taking the next step. I know you and Rhino, I big up to yourself as well because I agree with well, a lot of what you're saying. Also, Th- those two words are so prominent in football because it's Rome was not built in a day. All these these things that I'm saying to you, you don't really don't like to hear them, but they're realities. Saf failed twice back to back his first two seasons and then built a dynasty. You know, Arteta, would you say okay, Bournemouth? How would you match up Bournemouth and Man City's team, like in terms of player for player? Well, so so this is the interesting thing because that's a great point. You, what what you would what I feel like you're trying to insinuate is that I'm trying to say that Bournemouth team's better and how comes they've going to beat us at the old Trafford, which is behind you? No, but, not, no not even that. I'm just, I'm just Bournemouth seeing it as in, yeah, they gave Man City a good fight. But look at their difference with their yes. squads. So 
Um, yeah, okay, well, yeah. okay, well, I'll, I'll do both angles then, Rhino. Because okay, yeah, for yeah. me, like I was saying before, embarking on playing on the opposition's half and all 11 of your players are in the opposition's half for 90 minutes is a hard task. You're always going to have the difficult end, the, the shorter end of the stick in a football match because you're risking so much. There's so much space in behind you. It's just you. It's just the back four on the halfway line and your goalkeeper. That's how Man City play every single game. The demand for that level of quality of football, you need world class footballers, at Rana. You just do. You just do. It just is how it is. Barcelona. You need world class footballers, though. You don't need world class footballers in every position to be a great team. You just have to be a correct coach to manage those players into playing a better system. You know. So if you've got a manager who can identify players, you talked about Aston Villa squad. That's called talent ID and having the, the know-how to bring in certain players that fit his style. He brought in Anthony. He brought in Mason Mount. He brought in X and X. So that's also down to him as well. His persistence with certain players, McTominay, through the middle, that's down to him. He doesn't have to play McTominay. He could have played this guy Amrabat. He hasn't played this guy Amrabat. And he brought him in for 10 million in the summer. 10 million. So when you talk about like Asimilla squad, he could have chose a different pathway for his team to be set up and his team to be where it is. So he's then allowed himself to be in that position. Is that down to us? Do we get the blame there for feeling the way we feel? Or is it his own actions that have caused this? So, so you're talking now specifically on talent ID and acquiring a good enough squad to be able to compete against the top teams in the league. Aston Villa have fallen upon this to a degree. I don't know how many signings, someone would have to educate me on this. I don't know how many signings Emery did directly said, yeah, this one, this one, this one. But they've kind of fallen mm-hmm. upon this. The squad's grown into this form where they're a good bunch of players. The profiles work for what Emery wants to play. What style of football Emery wants to play? Counter-attacking football, which is what I was trying to mention on Rhino's point, which is the the the, the story of or the job of having all your 11 oh, footballers. Counter-attacking football. That's disingenuous. Okay, it is. It is. Come on, it man. Is. Yeah, it is. And I can agree with that. No, no problem. So it's, it's, a, it's like a football? mid-block setup. It's a mid-block setup with good enough mm, players. Nah. So nah. what are they playing? They're not playing generous. possession football in the opposition's half. I think, bro, I don't, think, seen... I don't think Villa are out there. I do agree with Marcel. I don't think Villa, they're not yeah. really, like, they're in the middle. They're like yeah, really they're the, mid block. the perfect middle of, yeah, it's a mid, it's a high line mid-block really much. They, they yeah. push up high, but they also want to defend like, in four, in like, I think it was it four banks or two or something like that, but it's still a well, high but, line. Greeks, Greeks, Go watch their goals, though. Go watch their goals. The, the the level of goals they're scoring and the way they pass out from the back, the way they're moving in zones and triangles and whatnot. You can see there's a there's a training ground method to what they're doing. You know, you can yeah, see that. You clearly. can do that counter, but you could do that with counter attacking methods, though. Yeah. So, so it's not so like that, yeah, that, that, that ambition to play 11 footballers behind the ball and then burst and make the 70 yard runs, the uh, quick attacks where the opposition have risked so much in behind them. It's an easier task for me, uh, 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 Rhino. So, so that's that's trying to explain to you why maybe Bournemouth have done a little bit better than us against City or or why Bournemouth beat us at home, that kind of thing, because th- their job was to sit in, camp in, and then take advantage of us. And in that game, though, particularly when we played Bournemouth, it was individual errors. It wasn't actually even their counter-attack structure. It was Scott McTominay. It was, we were just crap at football in that game. Again, that's just, that's not Ten Hag's fault, in my opinion. So I I just feel like we're we're at a stage now where we have massive mitigating circumstances. These injuries have hindered the way that our manager wants to play. The reason why Aston Villa have a better squad is because Emre's inherited a good set of players or players that are happy to play in this mid-block, whereas Ten Hag's inherited a set of players that are used to doing the counter-attack, 11 players in their half, you know. And then, yes, he's added players, which is what Saeed's mentioned, Anthony, Mm -hmm. or talent ID. And I can and I can admit to you, Said, very very waste. Put your your mute, Said. Can, can I just say, yo, do, do we not? You just said there, uh, Marcel. Yeah, he's he's brought a team that's played a counter attacking way, but you would argue that he's trying to implement this counter attacking way, and he can't even do that correctly. You know, so do, do not be genuinely honest, here, guys. If you look at this counter attacking style, is it effective enough? Because we're not it scoring beautiful. goals. It was beautiful. That that count the way Ten Hag said like it's not better than Ole, because I think I might have said some I think I might have said before with Mina that it is better than Ole's, and I'll retract that. But the way he Im- the you. way he implemented that counter-attack against City just the other day was oh beautiful. He's got two players in the forward line pressing high, <laughs> and he's got all 11 players behind the box. It it created. No, Vasa, 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 Vasa. Can I explain it? Can I explain it? I don't even. I don't think that's Ten Hag's best, uh, like counter attacking system. Bro, the you're using the worst. Sunday, 
No, no. Last year for me, I thought he had great counter attacking uh, system in terms of patterns. Like the yes, one against yeah, Arsenal. Home. Against, uh, yeah, home, against Arsenal was the best one for me. That first, yeah. that first goal that we scored, where we had about 25 yeah. touches. We were playing out the back. And then, like, the yeah, line breaking yeah, pass. Yeah, I agree. Even against City at home, I thought we did well in that first half, especially. Liverpool, I thought we did. Arsenal, Arsenal, Arsenal at home. Arsenal at home. Arsenal at home. Arsenal at home. At home. We beat them. The three one. Rashford. Yeah. That first goal. That first goal that we scored was, was yeah. one of my favorite That's goals. That's what you should be remembering. Not this one. No, but even had that. but Griggs, oh, no, you know, if we, Anthony, even if we move it to Anthony this Anthony. season, yeah, I think the Arsenal away, how we played at the start, the way we kind of drew them in, and yeah, this season, um, last season. Yeah. Last year, last year, no, this last season. Was better, last was it better than Man City game? I don't think... I, so, well, well, the point mm. I'm trying to make, guys, is I don't think... So, that Arsenal game, I don't... That you're talking about, Rhino, I don't think was counter-attack. We tried to go machine for machine. Couldn't beat... Like, they... Like, which we, one? Which one? Uh, wait, when was that? The Emirates? At, at the Emirates, yeah. We we, we, mm. we we got up to the stage where we forced Arsenal Football Club into a mid-block and then couldn't do anything in the forward line. And so, we were stuck and they kept back coming back to us. No, that but when Garnacho's offside goal was an example of what we were trying to do, though. Was yes, it, yes. Not, and we yeah. created similar opportunities against City the other day, you know, and we created similar opportunities against City Liverpool. felt like more I, long I, ball I, though. I, City I, felt I, like I, more I, long I, ball. I say this with the counter-attacking mm. thing. The counter-attacking yeah. thing did look better when once the front three of Garnacho, Hoyland, and Rashford has been implemented because you have three yeah. direct players. It looks better. But the mm. thing is, once one of those players goes out, that all goes out the window because mm. we, once again, we don't know how to counter. On Sunday, for example, we did not do a good job countering. I don't think any of the, I didn't see any really counterattacking patterns. Bar the goal, the goal, which didn't even come from a counterattack, it came from a goal kick from Onana. Mm. So it didn't even come from that. Mm. Every other counterattack, the Rashford chance where Rashford headed the ball down, it came from Diaz miscontrolling the ball. He slipped, that we capitalized on it. The brutal pass that Rashford missed, uh, that he shot, like he miskicked it from far post. Okay, that was a good play. Bruno, that mm. was a good one, but we didn't have enough counter. I think last year we did a better job of counterattacking patterns. But myself, since you mentioned the Ole interview, this is where we come with Ten Hag, right? He, I don't think Ten Hag really wants to be a counterattacking team his whole tenure at Man United. Yeah, he's not. He's, he not is, he's not. So it's about taking the next step. Yes. I personally do not trust Ten Hag. I don't. Try, I don't really rate his coaching methods. I don't rate his coaching philosophy enough to really take that next step. I don't think he's good enough for me to take that next step. And that's where I, that's where I'm at. I understand yeah. why you might think that because, like, obviously with the IX performance and something like that. But the way I see the way that he the way that he tries to set up his press, which for me is not good enough. No, I don't think that United can really get under Ten Hag, even if we get the right players, can ever end up going machine for machine against Mikel Arteta's Arsenal, against Pep Guardiola's mm-hmm. Man City. I don't think we'll ever reach that stage right. with Eric Ten Hag. So that's where I'm at with him. I just mm. I know I know understand you think that with the right personnel, if he gets the right recruitment and all that kind of stuff, that he's a good enough coach to implement this. Mm. I personally don't. That's so, what mm. so before, so, before well, you I'm, go, Marcel, before you go, before you go, big up to Halle Pennington. 2020 through 23 season, Liverpool's 27 games, 43 points, 23, 24, United 27 games, 44 points. Injuries. This is not excuse unless one is biased or deluded. Okay, mate. Big up to Jalapeno. Can we check Marcel's bank for deposits from Eric Ten Hag? Listen, that was a freak season, yeah, but you can still see Liverpool, what they're trying to do and what they're trying to go about. But I need to go back to your comment, uh, Marcel, please, because you said it was a beautiful, beautiful... It was a beautiful implementation of this counter-attack. Explain why, explain, explain. Yeah, so so two players in the forward line, normally with a counter-attack system, you have one. Two players in the forward Mm -hmm. line, Scott McTominay in behind. And by the way, for me, I'm talking about the structure, the 4 3 one, two. The way he tried to implement that and keep it nice and tucked in, compact in front of our box. And then you've got two players bursting out through the line in the forward line. You've got Scott McTominay there that's got the energy. He just needed it literally. Ten odds issue, he hasn't got good players until you look. And for all of the managers, Jose Mourinho, he had one or two, I think, world-class players. But I don't think Ten Hag has one world-class player in his team. You know, at least M- Ole had one. At least Mourinho and you had don't one. need world-class players. You d- no, really, is, this is what I'm trying I to say. Like, really, Tottenham I don't so, have world-class players. Nah, Villa need, don't have world-class you players. Need world-class yeah, you do need yeah world-class I really disagree point. with you there, Saeed. World-class it's just impossible to fathom so, so, otherwise. To play Even Leicester. Right level of when Leicester won the league, you know they had a world-class Kante. Let's not be silly now. A world-class A world-class Mahrez. You think he was world-class at that time? What he went world class at that time. 
cuts. You say no, no, even cuts in yeah, no, 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 no. No, think about that. Conte wasn't regarded as world class, but he played like a world class player in that season. Yeah, that's different. That's different, though. That's different. No, but that's, that's, different. No, no, no. Because that's who you are. are. That's no, what you are. are. No, you I'm are world class. Your essence for that we season. Didn't know Conte, 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 Mar- Conte and Mars that year had were world class players class. In that season, within that season. And so we, okay, okay. And Vardy, I'll so, so Bruno well, Fernandez. So Bruno Fernandez, yeah, when he scored X amount of goals, did everyone regard him as world class? Yes. When he before under Ole. Under Ole, yes. What are you talking I about? I didn't think he was world class, but again, he wasn't performing to the That's level it. of Mares and Conte, though. So th- th- that doesn't matter anyway. Those guys were incredible. That's what I'm saying. No, but it's, it's, it's different. Be, it's yeah, different being regarded as a world class player. Like Conte, yeah. Conte and Mares, no one knew about them in 2015 16, but those specific seasons that they had were some of the best seasons you could have in their position. Mares was absolutely incredible. <laughs> he got world class recognition after that season. And Golo Conte was uh, was one one of the best midfield seasons you'll ever see. The guy covered every inch of ground within that within that pitch, and he ended up having a world class season at Man United. How we, we how many world class seasons have we had since let's say Sir Alex left? There's not that many. I've, Bruno's but, but Bruno's think, delivered faster. Yeah, Bruno has delivered faster. But so yeah, but I, just, I'm not disputing that. At the start when he was, when he came in, he was scoring the goals. Fair enough. He was the one that was delivering. But I still don't call him world class. Yeah. Hence why I'm saying you don't need world class. Go from like D P D to, to like a... Herms now. Herm, Herms delivery is he's just downgraded. <laughs> but I'm just saying, like, you don't have to have a world class team to be functioned correctly and to be playing appropriate football. I don't yes, it would help yeah, to have world class players. Bro. Don't get me wrong. Certain systems had a lot of bad players' is... flaws, bro. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I, man. I strongly system, disagree with you. What, no, where, are we, where are we looking to go? Like, go, ahead, go ahead. Where are we go looking ahead, to man. go? We're looking to win the league. The league requires you to have a certain amount of world class players. No, no. Why? Why are you asking time. me? Why One are you going to ask time. that question? Because you've seen the last five to ten years, or let's just cut it down. The last five years, the winners and the second place have required them to have world class players in there. So if you, have Tottenham got world class players. They used to in Harry Kane. Um, no, now this they, season. They this have season, Son. You know, well, this I'll, I'll come to it right now. The, the Son, Mm-mm. we can, we can yeah, dispute. Son, I can, um, what's that I one? The, the Polish in the... He's in there. He's in Pulis- there. Kuli. I'm really sorry. And then what's Pulisevsky. that one? Right? I want to say number 21. Class. Yeah. Tw- number 21. Pulisevsky. Nah. Is, he, is, is, is he... I would say he's he's pushing. He's pushing. But you, and so. Madison. He's, cold. he's a good player. Whoa. Madison. Whoa, 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 whoa. You, you think Kulisevsky's pushing world class? Yeah, he's pushing. Man. I think he's, he's a good player, but... He's a very good player. This is what I'm trying to say, man. You're moving the goalposts, my guy, man. Think... You're now putting this idea that <laughs> certain players are world-class and therefore they're playing at that level. Broski, they're not Ooh. world-class, man. No, they're no, no. Decent not... players. They're good players. They're not yes. pushing world-class, but they have a manager who implements a style and makes them better... That's what no, Deserbi has done yeah. for the past two seasons. Yeah, He's no, actually yeah. made players like Mitoma play unbelievably. And, and and guys in there, okay, they're not playing well now, but that's what a manager does. He makes average players look good. No. Provided no. there's a good solid that's base. What, what, Pep, Pep's never done that. <laughs> Pep's never done that. Yeah, so Pep's a free when we're saying that's what managers do <laughs> and we're trying to get to a certain caliber, Pep's never Managers done. in our level. We're not Man City yet, man. You're, so, but, you're going yeah, to so, a level that that's, Man City. Yeah, but One no. step up with fifth, bro. Minus two goal difference, yeah? Yes, with so fifth with minus two goal difference. That's our level, Marcel. Add into my point. This is our level. To my point. I feel like you're adding to my point because I'm trying okay, to say on. to you, I'm trying to say to you, well, we, we need world-class players. And right now, we're fifth with nothing. The squad is nothingness. So we need to add somethingness in there. And and the requirements in the this league to win it, you need two or three world-class players. And we just don't have them. So get rid of and bring... Inject the okay, quality okay. into the team. Okay, so who who who's in there that United can go and get right now? That's a world class. Nah, let's not even Please. go to that next. No, 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 let's no, not even no, go no, to no, that next. I'll go on. I want to ask. I want to. I want to kind of debate what he's saying as well. Um, oh, okay. Leal, no, no, no. Leal from AC yeah. Milan. Bro, um, come on, man. Do you know his release clause? Do you know his release clause? Bro, okay, okay, I, okay. I don't okay. understand. Really so, what, what, no, no, wait. So, when, okay, so can you restructure that question then? Because you because okay, okay, okay. said something and then there. you United. gave conditions. Okay, okay. All right, okay, see, okay. Realistic, okay. Realistic, 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 realistic world-class players. Realistic, realistic world-class players that are world-class that United can attain. So, thank you, because I've given you an answer straight away and you've shot me. So, okay, okay. Liao is a lot of money. It's a lot of money, Liao. A lot of money. A lot of money. So, what you're trying to say is you want me to be Dan Ashworth right now. Find you potentially Matomas 
and and that other Argentine player that was wrapping it top bins before he got injured for Brighton, and you know, and That's all these so. kind of man, and and at a budget price, I have to go and do my homework, you know, like Dan Ashworth's been doing then. But you know, out and out, ja- pardon, out and out, ja- oh. out and out, like Neves for buying Fe- for for Benfica and all these man. You'll say you're gonna say to me, no, 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 they're too high priced. So we million, have- a lot of money, a lot of yeah, money. So so what we have to do then is balance the books and get in what Newcastle's been doing. Get, we have to, we're going to look like a Brighton and a Newcastle, but we're going to have so the Barnes, right player Barnes. profiles. We're going to have the Barnes, right player Anthony profiles. Gordon. All okay, the... Barnes and Gordon. Barnes and Gordon. I would, and definitely, take, I would definitely take Anthony Gordon at United. I would definitely take Anthony Gordon at United. Do you think they could have maybe not United? Barnes. Maybe not Barnes, but definitely Gordon. Gordon's shown that calibre. Barnes, maybe not so much. No, um, but even if you're in Newcastle, Bruno G, for example, that's... I don't think he's world class, yeah, but he's he's a great player. Um, Isak. Not, like not saying Isak. we need to sign a striker, yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. but yeah, I'm yeah. about like that kind of. I think but, United for me, United need to go get players that that aren't technically yeah. world class yet. But we need the net, oh man. Yeah, but they're on the cusp. Neto. They're on the Neto, cusp. That's that's what we need. At least say yeah. them man there. But that's what but I'm trying to say. Here, before, the before, the before I go back here. Before, yeah, exactly. all, before I let Rhino come in, because I'm going to get super yeah. chats involved. All I'm saying yeah. to you is, yeah, when you're building the foundations, I feel like what Ten Hag hasn't done here is, first of all, fix the the players that we've got in terms of what he's brought in is already a mess. The Antonys, the, you know, the Mount, it's not worked out, right? And he's had injuries and whatnot. Amrabat, stuff like that. You know what I mean? Even the lone players he's got, not worked out, et cetera, et cetera. So they're already red flags in itself here. But his actual talent ID has been shocking, man. So I actually don't believe in the argument there, you know what? He can go and pick out world-class players and put him into our squad. Because he, he hasn't shown the proof is in the pudding that he's improved what he has already. I'm not going to yeah. give a guy a uh, £1,000 yeah, when he's wasting money. I've given him money last week. Yeah. I said, yo, make sure you go buy X and X amount, yeah? And he's come back with nothing. And then I give him another £1,000 to buy what? I'm going to give another thousand and pounds. And they what? tell you, no, you should have walked around with another guy with a list, and then he should have been helping you buy what you should have bought. But there should be some competence for himself by himself, as he, for him. For Ten Hag himself, he has to have competence yeah. at a level to be the Manchester United manager. I don't think he's, pro- he's proven enough just to show the basics of handling this job. That's what the problem is for me, you know. But do the yeah. super chats. I want to ask. Marcel yeah, let me do the super questions. chats. Yeah. yeah, big up to big up to everyone here. Over seven hundred in the building. Please get your comments in, like the video, share, become yeah. a member. Big up to you. Memphis Depay says, end of the season, we will be one decade since Leicester won their title and we are in six. All right, big up to Tariq, man, always showing love. He says, Marcel, neither Pep or Jurgen had world-class players. Their system and winning trophies made their, these players world-class. I right, big up football or soccer, big up, bro. Marcel, you're yeah. saying Villa squad is better than ours, but yet you call Bruno world-class. Contradiction statements. If Bruno's world-class, Whose job is it to get the best out of these players? I'm big up to Abba. Yeah, that's crazy. Who said Pep never done that? Uh, who won the league with Fabian Delph at left back or won the league without a nine? Waffle. You know what is with Jurgen Klopp, though? How many players were, were, were world class when Jurgen Klopp got them players in? How many players yeah, were world class? What, 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 what do you mean by that? Or oh, when you got the players in? You know when, uh, when, he, when he started when he off? Salas. Like, Oh, when he, he just started. He made them, when you look at it, he actually made them like world class, like he, his yeah, system yeah. or whatnot. They, they became world class yeah. under him. Do you get yeah. what I'm trying to say? That's like, you don't just get the... you become like, you know what I'm saying? They, but they, yeah, but they, they have the potential and they're what the, the term I can't remember what the Greeks use, but they, they're, they're coming to the cusp of it. The they're, cusp, they're close. Yeah. Do you get it? So it's like, that's like Marty, you could tell, Ma- you could tell Marty and Allison, for example, were really yeah. close to what, well, like they were just yeah. the right stage, the right Trust platform, me. take that next step. All of those super chats, by the way, I, I don't want to waffle. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know what? Big up to Big Steve in the chat. I didn't, I didn't um, bottle man talk. I'm still, I'm in crutches right now. So allow me in it, Steve, man. Yeah. If you want me, I'll come, I'll come down whenever. You know what I'm saying? Big up Big yeah. Steve. Make sure you follow, watch your overlap, people, man. Big Steve was on there. And then oh, Matisse yeah. as well. Ugwa next, is, bless your heart, Marcel, but you're yeah. moving mad. Kulazewski, world class. I retracted, that. I retracted that. Because I people retracted. are already asleep. Man said people <laughs> are already asleep, you know. Big up to Ugwa Reds. You know, let me let Rhino, di- let Rhino yeah. um, analyze what you Let's said. Let's break this down, we'll, Marcel. We'll, we'll have a good yeah. conversation because obviously I appreciate your optimism and your perspective. And at the same time, I can't see this picture that um, our gaffer's painting. So you can. So I just need help. Yeah. We, me and I think Side and Griggs will agree. We need help to see it. So cool. 
So, last season, yeah, came third, won a trophy. Since that trophy, you can probably say we didn't have any really good games. We possibly, yeah, we went in a downhill, down, downward spiral. Um, we still got a few results here and there, but we weren't playing particularly too well. We got smoked by um, Liverpool 7 or straight after all of that, you know, ambience and all of that feeling of win winning the trophy, which really should have given us momentum. Cool. So last season, yeah, yes, the league wasn't the greatest, but let me ask you something. What's the reason we came third last season? What's the reason? And I want you to include the variables of what kind of players we had, Ten Hag's management, and also our performance. And then I'm going to ask another question after that. So, so when we talk about performance, I, I want to also include the opposition because that's always going to yeah. be part of why the league is the league. I think there were a couple of teams that were underperforming in that season. And, and that's hence yeah. why we kind of coin it as an overachievement because those those teams, in you know, there was a couple in there that underachieved. But you yeah. still have to deliver a 38 game performances. Do you know, get it? So you have to do your job and, and our job yeah. amassed these amount of points. So you have to give Ten Hag credit for that. Um, we had a massive amount of games uh, right now that season. Yeah, record World Cup season. Football, record amount of football yeah. matches that footballers had to play. Taxes on the mm. body. So this season, where it's always going to be an after effect for, because of that. Don't be fooled, please. You know, and 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 so mm. so there's an element of that. Um, his system and the way that he tried to play football, it didn't um, speak Ajax football. It was literally Ole's football, but with Ten Hag's triangles, his philosophy, his confidence. You're trying to instill confidence into the players mm. to play this front foot style, but still keep it within our mm. box or, or close enough as possible to their box or their part of the pitch. But all these variables allowed us to play with smiles on our faces, to see build-up mm. patterns that we'd never seen before, to see a lot of good goals and, and good team goals with, two of, mm. with a few of his players that his talent ID for the longevity of his process will fail him. Anthony, Malasia, unfortunately, that's an unfortunate one. We cannot criticise Ten Hag for that. That's extremely unfortunate what's happened there. Casemiro, again, you cannot 100% blame Ten Hag for that because he wanted Frankie de Jong. And I don't think, you know, this was forced to him. And then even when Saeed mentions the price of these players that they purchased that, I like to throw percentage on things right now. I cannot give 100% blame to my manager for that. He does not go out there and put the price point or the wages for that matter of a fact. So... Again, two things that I wouldn't fully give blame or, or lay the blame onto Ten Hag. And when you get somebody with the betting shopping list, with the better shopping yeah. list, to use your analogy, he, that that whole situation is gone, you know. And he's able. And what just about like and don't mess up the and also I want you to and also the last variable was the the level of the players. What yeah. level did you think the players was as well? Don't forget that. But yeah, go on. Appreciate you for reminding me because I would have yeah. forgotten that. Yeah. So, so with yeah. with with the Pep with, with 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 Pep, he's got a system that works for him. That's so in tandem with him, similar to over Mars Van der Sar Ten Hag. He's got that Barcelona guy that knows exactly what he wants. So mm. it's, it's no headache, and they can get it at the good price point, like Dean Ashwood would at fifty okay. million all the time, fifty million, fifty million. So in terms of the play, the quality of the players, I think we missed Fred uh, Rhino. You know the legs. Mm. You, you saw it. What what um Ole was talking about, Fred the legs. He just wanted him for yeah. the legs in the team. That's why they're so important. That consistent okay. running, especially for a counter-attack system when you've got to do all these long dashes up the pitch to, to add bodies in the forward line or in the second line. You need legs. Fred was a yeah. big miss. Um, the, 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 the loans were, were, were okay. You know, they were mm -hmm. okay loans. Weghorst had some sort of a role in big games, but was poor in front of goal. Um, Marcel Sabitza was here and there. You know, so... The, 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 team, the quality of the team wasn't brilliant, but there was a, for some reason, there was a cohesiveness there. A new manager bounce. We've seen it under Ole, 13 wins mm. in a row. We've seen it under Mourinho, how much, you know, when they come in, galvanising the mm. team. This is normal, lacklustre traits of a poor team, you know, doing well for the first little bit to impress the manager. We've just just go before. back to that last bit. When you said, for some reason... Don't don't it doesn't that concern you that you just don't even know what it is you're saying for some reason like don't you, like like you can't and then I'm gonna say my next point and then we're gonna yeah. Oh, well, so like, for me, I think it's the quality of, it's the temperament, the mentality of the footballers not at the highest calibre and the quality mm. of the footballers not at the highest calibre. So when it's the ambience comes and, and the adversity comes, like in every single football match, and there's moments where you have to suffer and it's mm -hmm. difficult, you have to camp in. There's no warriors here. There's no dogs. So last season was more of the opposition failing than what Ten Hag did. Is that way where we're going with this? Is that what I'm, you're I'm, saying? I'm going to say that, I'm going to say that. Pretty much, that's what you're saying. 
it was more of it was more of the 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 new at the new management carefully Marcel no 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 no, because I because I want to get it properly so it was the new management that comes in that's always galvanized the squad that's always done that yeah new manager bounce yeah new manager bounce um Mm. Ten Hag's new style of playing football we saw a lot of build up goals last season last season Mm -hmm. and then underperformance uh from 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 the opposition from big teams okay. in the opposition as well. All right, cool. So okay. we, 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 we've taken all those points. Cool, perfect. So bearing all of these examples you've used, before that, Ten Hag has come, he's known the situation he's in. He's known what he's come from, from Ajax. He knows what he's missing. Mm. He's also heard from people like Van Gaal, and obviously he's probably done his research. He knows the state the club's in. He's mm. done all of this within the first season, yeah? And he's also had luck from the opposition team. So... Now, second season now, this style of play that you said worked, where, what happened to it? Well, don't you think he needs to be, now be accountable? Because you made a point earlier that I strongly disagree with. You said that some of the players have to take the blame because at, at the same time, um, I, f- I think you used an example you said something about it's not his fault the players are missing their chances. Cool. So right now, if I'm a teacher... And I would like this. I love this analogy. I'm a teacher, and my pupils are not listening. Yeah, teacher. The, the te- actually, the teacher example is not good because what we need to find a good analogy that means you can replace. But all I'm saying is, if I'm in charge of someone's performances and they're not doing well, and I also have the resources of other players to put in that position, number one to prove my discipline to show you if you don't play good, you're out of it, and number two to show the style and direction I'm going in. Why are we not blaming Ten Hag for these issues that we have now? Why are we not looking at the fact that he knew about the injury problems? If you're saying that the World Cup was so key and the players were so tired, Ten Hag knew this going into second season. So mm. now are you not... Sh- explain to me how he's not accountable now. He's had all um, of this research done for himself and now he's gone into second season and tried to mix things up. He's not that stupid, or is he? So where do we go now? I don't see how you're going to defend this. Because I've let so you build everything up for yourself. So now yeah. use it for the second season. Explain. Yeah. I so, build him up to tear so, him down. So, so, my, so, the second yeah. season, so the second season. Look, you're quick for you. Look, look you're, no, you're finished. No, I'm you're ready finished. to answer. <laughs> no, I'm ready to answer. But look, 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 this is my thinking. This is my. This is me thinking. This is me. You should listen. Do you know? Do you know what you've done though? Like the you know. You know. Computers. Computers. Yeah. Are, they. They. They study your. Your. Um. Your activity. And it. Mm. Oh no! Actually, I'll use a better example. Cookies. The reason why we accept cookies is because it lo- it looks at like your pattern so that mm. when you're loading new mm. things, it it loads up quicker because it generally knows what you're going to look at already. You've mm. already preloaded some of your thoughts. So you should you should have sixty percent of your memory there already, but you're now thinking new because you're confused. Why are no, we not building no. from the previous season into the new one? You've no, loaded not, most of your memory why already. No, no. Why I'm have we gone me. back? No. Okay. Oh, are you talking about me or Ten Hag? There. I'm talking about the fact that you, you you're struggling to you have to think I'm not about struggling. your you answer. Keep... Yeah, okay, go on. Sorry, go on. Go on. Yeah, go on. When, when someone asks me a question, I have to think about what yeah, you just yeah, said yeah. the words, what they mean. I'm, and then, I'm gonna get super chats. So I'm just so I'm that's doing this thinking. I'm doing this thinking mm. about what you're saying, uh, what yeah. you said to me. So the, the beginning of the first season, anyway, I was thinking that Kobe Mainu was a pivotal part of this and unfortunately got injured. He, Ten Hag has mentioned this to us. I know Sai can do that, but I listen to the manager. I know Griggs doesn't. But guess what? I've got a response for that. Yeah, that's he, why he got Amrabat though. Injured. If we didn't, if Kobe Manu wasn't injured, would if we wouldn't, wouldn't have bought Amrabat? I'm, I'm kind of ninety no, percent sure of that. No, true. do you know why? Do you know why I think that? Because when Amrabat was talking about the fact that he was struggling to find out what's going on or whatever, I think the pressure of Kobe Manu's injury kind of made them think, "No, we need a DM." Because realistically, if Manu was fit and we had Casemiro, why would we buy another DM? United don't really move like that. We're not going to buy a third DM, and fix it, buy three places in one spot. Realistically, mm. that's what I think. That's yeah, what I think. But anyway, I could be wrong. But anyway, so cool. You're going to talk about talent ID. So this is what I'm saying. He had enough evidence to know that we had the biggest season of our lives. He knew that players were going to be tired and injured. Yeah. Why has he not used that to now go into the second season? And on top of that, if you take away his talent ID, let's leave that. Let's say, fine, fair enough. We know his talent ID is not good. Why has he, mm-hmm. what's happened to the players now? What's going on? Are we, so, so whose fault is it now? Yes, That's what I'm yeah. saying. 
yeah, yeah, let me, yeah, if I can start explain. Yeah. So yeah. I was starting off with the beginning of the season because the first two games, especially when you're talking about implementing style of play, this yeah. I thought I felt like that was your biggest thing with your question. So I was just trying to yeah. go right yeah. back to the beginning because yeah, yeah, last on, season I last season I said counter-attacking style Oli Ball, but this season he did try to implement two ten hard ball, the three one six. We saw at home the first couple games, it didn't work, it was it was poor. Casemiro in that six doesn't work clearly. We've seen that multiple times. It should be Amabat or Kobe. Or, or it should be a never player is what we've seen. As time goes on and we've seen kind of how the, the six operates on the ten hog, you need a dynamic player. A Frankie De Jong maybe even Marshall, do you, Marshall, do you really? All right, so the three one six. Do you think the three one six can really work in this Premier League to a top level? So, I, I, I think it won't be the three one six, Griggs. I think he has humbled himself, especially in these last few games where we've seen beautiful football. He has somebody there, just, just closer to that six. He does have somebody there a bit closer, and he three, tries two, to play the single. Yeah, he tries to play that singular ten a bit more. Or, and that goes into three, the six, one. But 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 but, 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 but the Steve three Austin. one six Griggs, <laughs> I think if, if he had his players that he wanted, I think Griggs he would have been able to because that's because I know that you know understand Griggs, that's where I'm at with it. That I believe yeah, I, know. In the, I hate personally, I'm not a lot, I hate the three one six. I think trying it in the Premier League is suicide. I really yeah, I, I generally I, think it's something I understand that. I don't I think it's gonna be the three two five is what I'm saying, is what, okay. I, is what I'm essentially saying. And I think I should maybe consider but but for the argument of what, what you're saying there, Rhino, is that there's so many injuries broke down that three one six. But you knew that I, was gonna come though. You I don't, knew I don't that think, I, I he don't, must you know have. Said, you know people, people, with yeah. the way we play, there's always a risk with injuries. Nobody yeah. can deny on top that, of the big season the we had we last play, season with a lack of control. But hold on a minute. The way we play, yeah. There's always a lack of control, yes or no. There's always this element of we're always chasing back the ball and we're, we're in kind of a no-man's land in terms of maybe it's 3v3. Maybe it's a situation where we're exposed and everyone's pushed up the pitch. We have been like that. That's why a lot of these injuries, muscular injuries, the intensity of the training, yeah, it's a risk, but them risks become because of what you do in training. So if you don't want to have that risk, you don't do that sort of training, especially before the game. Another one, the way we play football, we're always chasing everything. So if you're chasing everything, Marcel, and you don't have the ball, for a majority of the time in the, in the league, we don't have the ball and we're chasing around. They're going to come. The injuries are going to come as a result. Yeah, there's freak, they, there's freak situations with Luke Shaw. I understand that. But the biggest one with Ten Hag, the way we play, is a lot of out of possession. We're running back. We are, we are, we're, we're using so much energy that I don't think we should normally use. Because because we have the lack of control, I think. Let I me think just get a couple of super chats in, yeah. Master. Before before we go in, because I want to I want to I want to get into that. By the way, get everyone hit the like button, people, man. Everyone hit the like button right now. Jay Social says issue with Ten Hag is that he's playing the worst ball in the league. No one's asking for pet ball, but there's no excuse for looting to make us look shit. Big up to MDR Samurai. Big up to you. World class players are built at the club level, uh, not the other way around. We had world class players, and under the manager, they are now crap. That's on Eric Ten Hag. Uh, Marcel, when the last time you enjoyed 90-minute football? Uh, triangles. Uh, big up to Ugo says, triangles that we have never seen before. Marcel. Big up to Jay Solskjaer again. Says, Only Rashford Bruno that played under Oli Maguire and Lindelof are not starters. So this myth that we still have the same team as Oli is BS. Uh, big up to... Big up to... Olu says, Marcel, between De Zerbi and Eric Ten Hag, who would you say is better implementing their style? Compare De Zerbi and Swasolo to Eric Ten Hag at Utrecht. We'll get back to that comment as well, because we'll talk about De Zerbi as well in a bit. Big up Tariq says, I guess my brother Marcel won the debate by Carlos Wafflers. I hope you guys keep Eric Ten Hag. Big up, lads, all love. Um, big up to Jalapeno says, Rhino, if you look at the fit players over the season, the fit Villa and Spurs are better players than ours that have generally been fit. I'll debunk that one as well. That guy on the second upper right, the question I have tried to ask a thousand times on the channel, thanks to him. How ha, ha, man is stuttering because Rhino cooked him. I didn't, get to, him I didn't get to answer. Question. Why, why Eric Ten Hag benched Varane for Evans saying Evans is better left centre-back? But when Varane played with Evans, Varane plays left centre-back. He's an idiot. Yeah, there's been contradictory statements. Let me just get Griggs involved one second here. Do you believe these injuries have happened just out of the cost, like no, ra it's random injuries. Because I believe these are self inflicted, you know. I really, really do, you know. Like th this manager has caused a lot of these injuries as well. I really believe that. I'm trying to think of the injuries. I, I don't think Licho is really on Ten Hag. 
maybe the first no, one you can maybe say. But yeah, like, the first one, yeah, definitely. Maybe you can maybe argue, but I think Leecha, I think the medical staff shouldn't have cleared Leecha to begin with. The moment, the moment that a player has to take injections to play a match, the medical team should have not cleared him. Let's just get started with that. I think for me, every single party responsible has to take blame for that. The second one is Kufa landed on it, yada yada. You take that. I believe I think Ten Hawk should take blame for Luke Shaw a little bit. I yep. think Luke Shaw was overplayed, and I think that led to injuries. But it is what it is. Uh, Mason Mount, I'm not going to blame Ten Hawk for. I'm not going to lie. I, I don't even know what Mason Mount's injuries are half the time. One day it's a calf, maybe the other day something else. So I do the my the Holland, overall statement Holland. is though. The overall Holland. statement though is like I do think that we have to cover so much gaps within the system. This is exactly we leave it. so much yeah because we leave so much space that. You have to do a little bit extra running, more sprints. It's not because it's not really just running. It's just the amount of sprints that we have to do on the pitch. And if you have to do that many sprints at high intensity, the muscles, like the leg muscles, are going to start cramping up. They're going to start feeling it. Exactly. Because let's be real. First of all, players aren't one hundred percent fit in every game. By the way, they don't play. They they're not one hundred percent fit through the whole, the whole season. Even the ones that don't miss any games. By the way, an athlete is injured pretty much every game they play because they're not. They 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 have too much. They've had too much wear and tear on the muscles so mm. but ten hawk system is is making that wear and tear even 10 times full because of the amount of sprints you have to do so mm. that's where i kind of i look at ten hog i'm like you're asking these guys to run a little bit too much in terms of the space you have to cover the wide channels and stuff like that like i just because mm. i i had this worry from ajax days because ajax he always used to defend 2v2 he would always leave martinez and timber on an island pretty much but their NBC talent is not that good. So even though they have to defend the wide channels, it made it a little bit easier for them. In the Premier League, most teams on the opposition have a lot of PNP players, which means you have to do a lot of running. Luton, for example, Luke Shaw on an injury had to go up against the fastest player in the Premier League in Ogbené. He cooked them. It was cooked. Luke Shaw had to sprint against literally the fastest player in the Premier League. What was gonna what did what did he think was gonna happen? The week before against Villa against Aston Villa, go up against Leon Bailey, another rapid guy. And even if even if Luke Shaw survived the Leon Bailey, right? The 65 minutes, who came on? Musa Diaby, who's even faster than Leon Bailey. So in the Premier League, I don't think you that's why that's why I mentioned the system. I don't think this guy's like the way that he because I understand he wants to play front footed. And if you want to play front footed, you're gonna have to leave gaps in, in behind, right? Yeah, but yeah, yeah. based on the way that I've seen his ID when it comes to like center backs and stuff like that, if you want to defend like that, Lissandro, look, I love Lissandro Martinez, right? That's my guy. But he's not the right guy for that. Not in the Premier League. Because first yeah, of all, recovery Lissandro pace. Martinez cannot run like that. He has, yeah. obviously, he ha- he sh- he's on the shorter side. So he has short legs. So he has, to do, he has to do a lot of extra running to make up that ground. What does that lead to? Yeah. Muscle injuries. That's why. And this is why this is why I have an issue with Ten Hag. This is the same guy that criticized Pep Guardiola in Pep's first year. He said Pep under underestimated the physicality of the Premier League. So you come into the Premier League as a gaffer, and what do you get me? You get me twinks. You get me Anthony. He is not physical. Lissandro Martinez, I love him. Yes, he's physical in terms of like mentality and attitude, and he'll get into a tackle. He doesn't mind that, right? But from a physicality point, in terms of physical attributes. Lissandro Martinez does not have physical attributes on the top tier center backs, right? When you look at Arsenal, for example, Saliba, Gabriel, top, top, yeah, top. Mad athletic. Athletic. Yeah, athletic. Yeah. City, Ruben Diaz, Akanji, Ake, top, top, top athletes. So I look at that. Who else do we have? Garnacho, for example. You keep persisting with Garnacho in the lasting 90 minutes. Garnacho might be the, the, the weakest player I've ever seen in yeah, my life. In team, I don't think yeah. Garnacho can. Yo, Garnacho is, weighs about 120 pounds. He was the opposite guy's disposal. He's no, but you don't play him. You don't play him ninety minutes. So I understand seventy minutes, but at some point you bring Rotate. in another guy, and that's what I have an issue with. Ten Hag is prioritizing athletes in the front line instead of the defense. The defense is for me where you need to have more physical attributes in in today's football. Yeah. We look at we look at how it's going with like because man, man, the fact that the guy Pep Guardiola, who used to be the antithesis of physicality, this guy just wanted tech, 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 tech. He looked at the Premier League. He bought Nolito in his first mm. year. He's like. This guy ain't going to cut out here. Let me go get yep. athletes. Ten Hag, when you go look at it, okay, Mason Mount is a decent athlete, but you could have you could have not gotten Mason Mount and you could have gotten Amadou Nana, who's the more physical player. You could have said, 
instead of and instead of prioritizing the eight, and you could have gotten in a six because you could have because for me you could have made Kobe the eight, and you could have yeah, gotten yeah. Onana in as the backup to Casemiro. Onana's oh, Amadou Onana's part arguably the biggest physical player that's available on the market right now. The guy is six foot four, covers up ground like it's crazy. Him and Declan Rice. So Thanks. I think he underestimated physical physical attributes and players, and now he's play he's he's um uh, he's paying for it. He's paying the price for it. When 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 did he say that? When did he say that? Because you mentioned a quote about him saying something against Pep. When did he say this? I, I, like look for it. I don't remember. Well, someone I don't in the chat the shows. Year, but it, yeah. yeah, someone in the chat shows. Like, Ten Hag mentioned and said that. Pep, yeah, extremely. Ten Hag mentioned and looked at Pep Guardiola while he's all the way in Holland and said, "Yeah, you over there, you don't know anything about the Premier League." That's essentially what you just said to me. No, he said, you know, he didn't. Say he didn't know. He said he underestimated the physicality yeah. in the Premier League. Yeah, and, and, and for me, and for me, I like, like I always mention to everyone, is I say because we we talk about the talent ID. Klopp's talent ID at the beginning was not good. Pep's Papa talent ID. ID. Papa uh, Pep, ID. Uh, Pep talent ID at the beginning was not good. They had to have like structure around them and and these kind of things. You know, over time it gets better. That's the process, guys. You know, when you have your squad, your twenty five man squad at the beginning. For me, all of these players. You see, when we're talking about running and all these things. They've never these players, except for Ten Hag's ones, which are not that many right now. How many are there? Active eight or something. And all of them. So, came Marcel, in you're saying Ten Hag needs eleven players What's that, that are as fit as oh, Bruno. Yeah, yeah, there we go. The eleven players that all as fit as Bruno, yeah. but then they have got the skill of. Like um, a community, Newcastle, basically. Uh, Newcastle you United. I just you just named me mm. Newcastle United Football Club and Aston Villa Football Club. That's what you just named yeah. there. And, and here's, that's here's the an article. Here's the article. Eric Ten Hag Guardiola misjudged physicality of the Premier League. He says he, um, fifty year old, uh, only once in his career Pep made a mistake in his final year, his first year at Man City, when he completely underestimated the power and speed of Premier League. Ten Hag told Football International. He said he realized you can't play that kind of football he loves without a couple of physical strong athletes. So he brought them in. So he's not a stubborn coach. Yeah, he's stubborn in his philosophy, but not in the execution. And that makes him the best. Right. So, so uh, the one thing that he gave advice for, he's now he's not following himself. <laughs> he, so, he's now following so, so himself, we, so, man. So, so, well, you know what I mean? What, how do you explain that? How do you explain season. that? On his first season, he, he overachieved, which means he, he would have got something right. Part of the performance, part of the part of the, the lack of performance. No, forget team, that. But... I'm just saying about this comment here. What, what, what do you think that the guy who gave advice saying, yo, I he didn't bring his physicality? It's, it's, what, what I'm trying to explain to you, Said, is I don't think that that's an... He hasn't got that wrong. Ten Hag's not wrong in this. Because the second season that he enters into, where he's currently underperforming sixth place, those physical players that we're talking about, Hoyland comes in injured. Amrabat comes in injured. Mason Mount that can Amrabat. do the Amrabat is physical. He's big and strong. And if we're talking about that element in itself, I would oh, he's not. He's like five foot ten. Man. I think is he's that five foot ten, bro. I think he's a. Nah, it doesn't matter about, doesn't matter about the height. I think he's a physical player. It's up to you lot to argue that, and that's, and that's your lot's prerogative. But I think he's a physical. But player. he hasn't. No, he has. He looks slow. He's looked sluggish. He's looked like you know. He's looked. He's looked, looked like an athlete. Injured. And he's another moving. one that he. Brought I in. think for me, I think They're Hoyland was. I, I think Hoyland is the one that he got spot on in terms of physical. You need an out yeah, number nine that. that, that's quick and behind. That. I think he got that right. Who else did he sign this year? Oh, not as a goalkeeper, so that doesn't count. Mount. I think Mount is. I think Mount is closer, maybe on the side of PNP, but. I think with Mason Mount, we just got him a year too early. We did not need to get Mason Mount in this past summer. Yeah, exactly. Summer. Because exactly. guess what? Mason Mount has started five games this year. Do you know how much Mason Mount would cost in three months' time? Three. Zero. <laughs> Zero. And I think United could have. I think United could have talked to his camp last summer and said, "You're gonna have to do one last year at Chelsea. We'll still give you the bag next year. We'll even increase the wages because you'll be a free signing. Just wait one more year." And United should have prioritized other signings because. Again, the physicality. What was the biggest issue for me, Ars, last year, in the, especially in the midfield? You look at Ericsson's profile, right? For me, that was the. I think that was, that was the biggest weakness we had to address. Mm-hmm. We need. We all said that we needed a faster, a, a more athletic player in there because Ericsson was a traffic cone. But we needed someone that was like, just basically a better version of Fred in a sense, because Fred, Fred had the legs, right? That Ericsson did it, but Fred mm. didn't have the technical. That's how I thought Mount was going to be, to be fair. But but but, but Mount mm-hmm. isn't. But Mount isn't really that kind of player. For me, Mount's always been kind of. A final, he's been more of like a energy man as well. I, I said energy. this, I've always said Mount for me is a left attacking mid, left 10. He needs to play a little bit tucked in right behind the striker on the left side. That's mm. where for me, Mason Mount uh, is at his best. 
I don't think yeah. he ever could have been the eight that Eric Ten Hag wanted. Look at mm. Spurs though. He played Spurs this season. Left defensive mid was Brandt was brilliant. The first half. What happened in the mm. second half? We got capitulated. We we done what Man United always do. <laughs> Do you get it? And and when we're playing under the ambience away from home, we capitulate. We we and the adversity comes and no, we're also, not fit enough that, to do that game. We were good. To do we were good on, we were to good on the, the ball. New class quality. Game. That's gonna happen. And that, in fantastic. that first game, we were quality on the ball in the first half. Right? Mount and the and the left DM and stuff like that. What about off the ball? Because off the ball in that first half, we weren't as good because Spurs had a lot of chances in behind in that half. Again, why? Because Mason Mount. Because you don't you don't have the defensive solidity, and that's because why? What did he, what formation did he play? Because you mentioned it. 3-1-6. If you're going to play a 3-1-6, why are you getting Mason Mount in there? What is he, he going to do? He's, he's that's, one why, the two, that's why it's true. He's one of the two tens that come back. In one of yeah. the so why not go get Javi Sanchez? Let me, let me, uh, he played the 3-1-6, you know. I think he played the 4-2-3-1. Mm -hmm. There was two DMs, and Mason Mount was one of them. Let me... Mason, Mason let Mount me bring started, started dropping a little bit deeper that game, but it still was a 3-1-6 mm. in essence. Marcel, you are doing great. A lot of fans are just too emotionally impatient that we know more football than Eric Ten Hag and his staff. Laughable. Michael, you are spot on regarding Eric Ten Hag on the estimated physical, physicality. Eric Ten Hag will learn and adapt. That's the point. Give him time. Can I answer that question, Listen, sorry, please? Bring back yeah, that one. I'm giving him please. 18 months. Bring back, bring back the last one. The last one. Listen, Jalapeno. Yeah. Yeah. Look, cool. I'm going to read that what you're saying so I can just put it in my mind and I can answer it respectfully. Marcel, Marcel. You are doing great. A lot of fans are just too emotional. I know that word. Don't worry. I was called that on Wednesday. And impatient uh, yeah. and think we know more than Eric Ten Hag. All right, cool. So are you now telling me that just because Eric Ten Hag is a professional manager with his coach badges, it means he's, he, he knows he, he can, he's going to get everything right and he's going to be the best manager that we need for Manchester United? Are you telling me that we... Just because he's a professional Eric Ten Hag, it means that we just have to wait as t five, ten years till he gets it right. Come on, let's be realistic here. At the end of the day, what I'm asking you a question, Alipino, is that don't you see enough from him to see that it's not working? Because you can say that with anybody. Just give him. Do, do you know what? Do you know what op opium is? When you just think something's going to happen. You know, that poor kid that maybe hasn't seen one of his parents for a long time and he's just waiting at that window, hoping that he'll come. And every birthday, the dad, the, the dad or the mom or whoever he's waiting for says they're coming. And then every birthday, he's watching outside that window and the person don't come. How long do you expect that person to stand at the window? Then you're going to say, oh, but the person might come. If we sit here and think, oh, I might be a millionaire. Let me just hope. Let me just sit on my backside and just hope I'm going to be a millionaire. You have to so have some sort of steps towards that. So are we sitting here just being delusional? When do you start thinking, okay, you know what? I am I might just be, you know what, yeah? Why don't you do this? Why don't you go to your nearest train station, yeah? Look at the last train and just stand there and see if maybe another train might come after it. And then I think at some point, you're going to get a bit too cold. You're going to get a bit too concerned. You're going to go back home, right? So how long must we sit here? So are you laughing at us because Marcel's got a bit more patience? So you want, do you want Marcel to be that poor kid at the window waiting? Come on now. They, you have to have, what's the word that we was asking, um, Neji? Your baseline. You have to have a tolerance level. You have to think, mm -hmm. you know what? At this point, this ain't working. So yes, Ten Hag might be a professional, but... Alepino, can't you not? Are you not thinking that maybe the Premier League's not for him? Maybe it's out mm -hmm. of his depth. That's what you have to think. So, you, what maybe I'm? I, 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 what I, you think I'm emotional because I've exhausted enough of my patience and used my common sense to think, you know what, this guy ain't cutting it. So what? So that there has to be something. There, come on, give me something. You know what I'm saying, man? Marcel is a high tower. Marcel, oh, all of us, I guess. Yeah, Marcel, yeah. so what are you saying? So, okay, cool. Marcel, let me ask you something. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, I was you ready to answer for him. I was ready to answer for him. Oh, yeah, him no, oh, yeah, yeah, go on, actually, go on. Yeah, let me hear what you have to say. Go on, yeah, but yeah. It will let the combo flow. Go on. My, yeah. my thing would be then, what is your common sense? Big up Jalapeno, by the way. Yeah. yeah, what is your common sense yeah. based on for me? Okay. Like, what, what is the basis of in which you're saying at this point now, it's, 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 it's been too long, your baseline has been reached because this would have been the same baseline under Mourinho. This would have been the same baseline under Ole. Like, how have you not built the You know my baseline? Mm -hmm. My baseline would be Saeed, hit that music and let me read that list that I read. That, that's the baseline. Oh, I'm not mm. sure. Oh, oh, yeah, I'm not going to gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna read it. I'm just saying, that's that's my baseline. Have you seen all the records that Tenaga's broke in terms yeah, of... Yeah. Like, that was a, that was a yeah. thesis paper. No, no. So like, I'm, 
I, I think I watched That's the show with you guys, man. and I think someone some of our legends, this. rest in peace, their soul, they're turning in their graves because we've sport such records that we've built at this club. He's destroyed them. It's breaking my heart, bro, as a United fan, bro. But I think I'm telling I, I, you, I think, mm. I think, I think what what you have to understand though, right now, I think is that that's happened under Moyes. It's happened under Ole. Not, not as bad though. Not as bad, Marcel. I really not think as bad. I really, I really think I really think you're you're in the moment right now. That's what it is. You're, you're and you're and because you're seeing right now, and you've I'll seen that. and you've seen it. You've seen somebody <laughs> get shot right now. So, but you so you've forgotten the last time you saw someone got shot. Do you get it? Or it's not as poignant. Oh <laughs> my god! I'm being deadly serious. I, 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 I hear what you're justification. <laughs> how could that be justification? By the way, because you're saying you're in the moment right now. So you trying to say there's a bigger <laughs> picture, like Ted Hag is saying? Are you trying to say we we have to get through this? And then no, later on, it's so, better days. Yes, to come yes, on because you yes, say minus two side, is good. Side. So, so, so your last manager just said that there was a step that needed to be taken. That needed to be taken. However, you get hold mm -hmm. of that step. So Ole told us that these players they just couldn't make the step. We had to. We had to change the way that we played football. We had to commit more bodies into the opposition's half. This is what well, Ole said. That he, he said he, seven he, out of ten. If you listen to the overlap, well, the McTominay that he said it was seven out of ten. The McTominay he said it was seven out of ten. He talked no, about that. Guy. No, 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 no. Don't do Ole. No, don't do that to Ole because what Ole was trying to no, say. No, no, that but that, that's what he did. No, but no, he, he never. Put, what he was trying to say is, what he was trying to say is, what he was trying to say is, is that within his system of players that couldn't make the next step, he had one or two players that could give him a certain level of steps that he respected. That was McTominay, that was Fred, and I can't remember the last person was. But these players, they get Dang you to a certain part of the, they get you to a certain part of the stations. Do you get it? They get you to your to, to the destination to a certain point, and they give it to you consistently again and again on the pitch. And he's saying the we needed those legs, and he respected that. But in terms of the whole squad, the, every single player Ole owned, none of them could make the next step into being coming a Premier League and Champions League winner. That's an issue. He said that they they, they capitulate. He said that all these things. So like, so how yeah. bad does it have to get then, like, Marcel? How bad do you think yeah, it really has to your, get? Yeah, you know what the yeah. issue is, though? I think Marcel is right in terms of that it has been this bad before. That should be yeah, right. I agree got sacked, it was I that agree. bad. When, when we got Jordan Ollie sacked, we all, yeah. every, single, every single United fan on the world except LUHG uh, Colt celebrated Mourinho sacking like it was their own like wedding. Let's be serious. We all did that. But the difference he was... He sucked himself. He sucked himself, no, though. But the only difference different, was back different. then, right? The Glazers were in charge. We didn't really... Yeah. We were like, okay, whatever. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna re repeat the cycle. Now we have a new regime in charge that's meant to change this whole cycle. So when we say mm -hmm. with, like, it's good to just get rid of Ten Hag is because we just want the new guys that are that are coming in, that are... So Ineos already came in, right? And then Ashworth, Barada, and all those guys. We want them to pick their guy to lead us into this new era if they th if they really think that Ten Hag is their guy then fair enough man I don't know why they think that but if they do it is what it is but I don't think that I don't think that is the case to be honest but that's why for me this is different than the other cases because if the Glazers were still like in charge right Richard Arnold John Murta and all like that then mm -hmm. I really wouldn't care if Ten Hag got sacked or not because I'm like whatever we're gonna go hire another guy and we're gonna repeat cycle again mm -hmm. but for me if Ineos is what we claim to be and stuff like that, then we expect the cycle to break. That is the, that is the hopium in this kind of thing. It is it, it is hopium as a, of this moment because there is no evidence to say that it will what work. Is, what is the cycle then, Griggs? The cycle is poor quality of players, down tools in and letting down managers. Yeah. It doesn't have anything really to do with the manager. You think they're down tooling? I say. If, yeah, they're not down tooling. They're and, not uh, down -tooling. Okay, not down. But they're they're not down okay, okay, okay. That's incorrect then, side. Let's just say the quality of the squad. The cycle is it's been poor quality every single every single time. Not in in yeah, theory, use your cor theory, words in correctly theory. though. They're not down tooling. Maybe they're just not good enough. But I don't think they're down tooling. Yeah, I can understand. They're I'm not saying good inferior. Enough. I'm saying even better. Inferior. Every single one is nowhere near machine machine for the for the top three teams in the league. Every single time for the last ten years, machine for machine, it's never been that. It's never been so. That. What you're so, trying to say, basically, effective. Uh, Last season, he overachieved with probably a worse squad than this season, right? Okay, that's 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 fair comment to make. Yeah. So last season was not under, not as great as this squad. But team, more yeah? available. But fair? more available, which is massive. Okay, okay. That availability. Uh, we've discussed that. There's certain elements that I think for me not helped in terms of the way we're training, the way we're doing everything. He's added to the squad, and we've regressed. You know, so therefore, when you look at it, the trajectory of where Ten Hag has been is that it went up and then it's been down. 
and therefore fans have every right. Hold on, hold on. Have therefore fans have every right. The way it's gone down, it's gone down. Zoom. Like a big gun down. And that, for me, is not acceptable. And that's why fans have every right to say, you know what? He's not good enough. And Saeed, to add on to that as well, Marcel, before you answer, where you say, well, we've lost hope and where our tolerance is. Another issue I have, and I will be very interested to see how you answer this, is that Ten Hag doesn't seem to do good himself against adversity. Everything has to be perfect for him. So if you now give him all the players yeah. he wants, and you put 11 players on the pitch... What happens when they all get injured and they start messing about? Then who do we blame then? Because he doesn't seem to know how to be pragmatic enough to know, okay, you know what? Let me, man let me manage this game well because he might be tired and, or he might, might get injured or, you know, this person's injured. Let me. He doesn't know how to, his in-game management is failing. So what, show, what proof do we have now that you give him everything he wants, but when it goes against him, he's going to manage it? That's my concern. That's okay. my concern. Okay, I don't know what to answer first because my brain's really on what Saeed said. It's super on. Okay, like, yeah, go on, go on, yeah, go on. So, Just go with so, that. I'll remind so, you, yeah. Uh, firstly, when you embark on front foot football, Saeed, it's a whole different world. It's just a whole different world. So last season, he was embarking on counter-attacking football or mid-block football. This season, he's tried, yes. to, he tried to embark on Barcelona football, Man City football, Liverpool football, in the opposition. It's a whole different world. It's just different. You just, 90% of the games you're trying to, and he hasn't even been able to do that because I, I can't remember your point exactly right now, but it's like the footballers firstly are not these footballers that can do this. They can't do this. That's why Mourinho is perfect for the job. Counter-attack everybody. He needs his warriors, Ibrahimovic. He needs his his killers, you know, guys that when they get to the forward line, you can you get you can uh, assure that they do this. So is his vision clear because he feels like the people behind backing him are going to replace all these bad players and he's eventually going to get what he wants. So he believes the clear vision's clear. They understand yeah. what he wants. Is that yeah, what yeah. you think he's he, he means? That happened for Klopp and that happened for Pep and that okay. happened even for Arteta with with Edu. That's what happens for managers right now. That's how football uh, managers work. Can I ask work. a question, Marcel? That's how it works. Before oh, right? yeah, yeah, you go, before you go, Griggs. Yeah, go on, go on, uh, go on, Griggs. Go on, go on. With, with Klopp, first of all, Klopp had had from day one when Klopp walked into Liverpool. Those guys played gegenpress press from day one. They did not last. Mm. Those guys got injured because of how much they wanted to press, but he never waned from it. If Eric Ten Hag, I, I think for me the first mistake was last year after getting whooped at Brentford, he got scared. I think he really yeah. got scared after he after yeah, he took the beating at Brentford. And he went for damage top. limitation. But when you look at it this year, once again, if Eric Ten Hag really want the front foot of football, I understand what he's trying to do in terms of the attack, right? Yeah. How to play front yeah. footed, committing all those bodies forward. I understand that. But my issue then goes into out of possession. Yeah. What the hell yeah. is, what is this out of possession? Tactic? When it goes wrong. Out of possession. Yeah. That's my, it's not even when it goes yeah. wrong. Because even when it goes right, it still looks bad. That's my issue oh, yeah, with out of yeah, possession. True, true, we true. are the worst team out of possession in the league, in my from opinion. The, the fullbacks for, from day one, we have criticized this. The biggest, ta the be best tactics, the best guys that analyze tactics, even on the socials and stuff like that, like H2, uh, HTMO, like stuff like that. We talked about fullbacks now back in the press. You are mm. the gaffer, you are the manager. Tell them to press. And if they do not back the press, then hook them at halftime. No one's going to criticize you for hook them at halftime. Arteta, Forrest, FA Cup, Nuno Tavares made, made a couple of bad passes. What did Arteta do? He took him off the pitch. Who, and guess what? We, Nuno Tavares never played again. Who do we replace our players with? Yeah, like, I've still not. That's if a you have to play an academy player, you play an academy player. You have to do what you got to do until the players get it through their head that you, ba that you back the press. That's what you have to do. You have to do what you have to do as a manager. You are at Manchester United. You are the manager. You have to be the boss. That's my issue with Ten Hag. Can I ask myself? Go ahead, Saeed. Can I ask myself, when's the last time you think Man United played at the highest level of Eric Ten Hag? When do you reckon is the last time United played at that level? Eric Ten Hag football. Wow. Yeah, proper Eric Ten Hag. When's the last time you think United played that, that, that Eric Ten Hag football? We... we... Haven't been able to see it. A yet. ninety minutes dominant. We, yeah, we haven't been able to see it yet, and that is why you guys are frustrated. But that's why I'm optimistic. At the same coin, we're looking at the exact same picture. We obsess about this club all the time, so I would say we haven't seen it yet. But I can see the 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 the, the, the ingredients for the soup. I can see it. There's no way. There's no two ways about it. And if he Marcel, can you define own, optimistic? Can you define optimistic, please? 
uh, I'm op optimism is is believing in a in 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 a in, sorry in, to cut you off as well. Yeah, yeah, it's it's believing in like a, a positive outcome from from the variables that you have. For, shall, you I, shall, I, shall I read it out for you? Please. Hopeful and confident about the future. Yeah. And it says, um, what else is the other one? Um, an optimistic person thinks the best possible thing will happen and yeah. hopes for it, even if it's not likely. Yeah. That's mad, you know? It's so, not. right. Mm -hmm. And it says, Eve, so that shows that no matter, even if you know it's not likely, you're mm -hmm. still hoping for it to happen. That alone, believe, we've won the, we've won I, I the argument. Oli, we've won I it believe it. No, no. I believe, uh, in, Oli Gunnar, I believe in Oli Gunnar Skolska's last minute goal against Bayern Munich. Yes, I do. <laughs> do you get what I'm trying to say? That's the yeah. reality, Rhino. We have to, um, you have to understand it. I see the bigger picture. It really and is. You, even if you think, and you think it's likely to happen, you, you, you're not, you don't have any doubts. Yeah, yeah. See, because that, because that description says even when it's likely, but in my world, it's not even when it's likely. It's a, uh, it's likely because if you, Okay. put these pieces of the puzzle together it happens even to the point where i would want because i know there's a deserve ten hog thing and i was the first one to say it side if you remember i was the first one to say i want deserve even this one deserve i can't lie to you look at you your talent id your everything like it's not looking good you <laughs> want to deserve with, it to I, come with deserve I, I, I really want to understand myself i'm trying I trust me first of all, we'll i appreciate deserve. you we'll guys man. i appreciate because i, I know you ask me genuine questions i don't think yeah. anyone really has had a proper discussion with, about the zerbi he's the guy People have gone into two different extremes. There's one people that treat him like he's the next coming of Pep Guardiola, that he's some uh, prodigy of, of nope. the Pep school of football. <laughs> and then there's the other side of people, of the people that think that he's overrated, and he's a bum, yada, 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 yada. I think for me, with the Zerbi, it's in the middle. First of all, I do think he's a better coach than Eric Ten Hag in terms of implementing his philosophy. Mm. I think he's more stubborn with it, right? He's not really mm. going to like go away, with it, away from it because he said that multiple times. Um... The thing is, though, again, my issue with the Zerbi are out of possession. The way I look at Brighton, they look terrible out of possession. I kind of get Eric Ten Hag vibes from that. It's player a profiles. Bit. But it's not only just player profile. It's it a is. When, 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 that you when Virgil van Dijk came to Liverpool, that was it. They didn't need to worry about out of possession no more. <laughs> you get that's it? not true. They were still holding. It was until Allison came. And Fabio came. Mm -hmm. When those two came, that's when it really solidified. Because they were well, still holding four in UCL semifinals against Roma. Yeah, like, but... They, when, they were scoring six. You, but it's the player profiles then. So you just name me two other player profiles to the one player profile that I mentioned. That just once you get that monster, once you get a yap stand, no, okay, no, Riddich, no. But the issue is, forget, but before the player profiles, you still have to see what's actually happening, and then you're like, okay, if we get these guys in, then it'll actually work. The I'm issue with it, Ten is, what are you seeing, bro? What are you seeing that if you get a certain player in, that it's gonna work? Because all I see is. I'm seeing my foot. I'm seeing my center backs defend at the edge of their own box. I'm seeing a midfield as open as the Red Sea. I'm seeing my fullbacks not back in the press. I'm seeing my attackers in La La Land. What are, what are we seeing then? So you're seeing players that are incapable of doing the 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 the, the, the job. That's what you're seeing. Incompetent footballers. Maguire doesn't want to play on the halfway line. He's not capable of doing it. So that's why he's seen so much space so in then, between so that. So then you tell him you either play on the halfway line or you sit out. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. So then you tell him to go on the halfway line and then he does it against Traore and gets spun. Do you get it? it no, no, but that, the thing is, though, that happens in moments of where we've seen that. I want to see that for consistent... I want to see that game no. by game. If I saw Maguire push up to the halfway line, right, and he was getting cooked, Every single game, I'm like, okay, Maguire just can't play on the half line. Yeah, but I'm seeing season, what you're bro. trying to do. I'm that seeing what you're season. trying to do. That happened last season, bro. And and he's and he and he told us all your surplus requirements. And then even in England, spun on the halfway line. And then the 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 the, the, the squad that we've inherited, Greeks, it's like mm. Ericsson can't do any running. Um, you know, uh you know, there's just too many men that just can't do this front foot football. And we've had managers previously, Greeks, that have all been counter-attack footballers. So and you know, get it. Let's let's keep compact. And we've never had man that just want to play in tight spaces and break down banks of four. We've never had this, bro. So you now we deserve it. You have to break the squad. There's a uh, you know, you know deserve You know, myself, deserve would have to break a lot of this squad down for him to play this style of football. Do you realize that? Yes, and that's why I want him. That's why I was the first to say it to you, Said, because I okay. want the squad to get broken down. All right, so, okay. And, and, and last point before you go into the Zerbi, Marcel. Yeah? yeah, you know, you said that the Ericsson and the identifying mm -hmm. the, the players we need. Don't you think the fact that Ten Hag 
can't identify the players he needs by the fact that he was given the realms and he's failed doesn't that cause you a cause doesn't that make a cause for concern now that if you do mm. give him the players he won't know how to who to where who to put and where to put them because he doesn't know how to identify talent so how does he know how to work with it when he does have it doesn't that concern you bro no, he when when he was at Ajax, he had talent inherited, so he didn't what, what you just said. But Ajax was an automatic it. car. It was yeah. a, it was the um it was the um Tesla driving itself, and no, Overmars and that was controlling the car, bro. No, well, <laughs> That's what I think. Yeah, I hear you, but no, because mm. no, because now they're failing. And and but yes, because under him, he inherited this these profiles and knew what to, and knew where to put the profiles. Do you get it? Okay. Now he's in a situation where he has no profiles. Let's just let's just do it arbitrary and whatever. Yeah, poorly yeah, yeah. spoken. He has no profiles, but once he gets them, he knows where to put them in the right spots. He can't choose the talent ID. Thousand percent agree with you. For this league, though, right now, for this league, I haven't seen him elsewhere. But Pep suffered in that way. Klopp suffered in that way. Arteta, I don't know. Uh, but that's true. That they've suffered true. in they, that they way. They suffered the same. So that's mm. part. Of the process mm. in my so my so automatically my my whatever you lot are calling it baseline it automatically because I understand that the greats had to go through that, Saf had to go through that, Pep had to go through that, Klopp had to go through that. They didn't achieve in their first couple seasons. You know, do you know what I'm trying to say? So, but can actually, you agree that? Did, but my manager did did. Injuries, by the way in his second season, Klopp made a Europa League final in his first year with a dead squad. That's what I was going to say. Year, he but, qualified for Champions League football in his third season. Again. Klopp made a UCL final. We okay. We've we we uh qualified. For well, we want to care about cup. Got into two finals, got into two finals, and got third place. Okay, and after that, what happened? We regressed. Why have we regressed, Griggs? Go on, well, go yeah, on. Act like none of the injuries. Now, go on. I dare you to act like none of the injuries happened. None of the situations with Ronaldo. Well, didn't have injuries in 1617. I didn't have injuries in 2021. 61 wins. <laughs> the brothers got okay, six one wins. 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 Had had all the rest of these guys. But I don't care about the wins last year anymore because those wins last year don't mean shit to me no more. Because this season, everything you did last year, you've negated. Because you, okay, you got me top four, right? You got me to third in Champions League. We finally made Champions League, right? What did you do for me? I got knocked out of the group stages, yes. so automatically top four was not for nothing last year because what we what did we end up with? Yeah, finishing top four and finishing eighth last year would have been the same shit because we went into Champions League, we played six games, we got slapped around Europe, and then we ended up with once a week football. What's the definition, did. Rhino, of pessimism? Because this is what you lot fester. <laughs> oh, no, 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 this isn't pessimism. And, 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 and hold on, Rhino. Reality, hold on, reality. Rhino, hold on, Rhino, because no, hold on, don't do that. Don't do that. Because at Champions League level, Rhino, because at Champions League level. Hoyland stepped up and said, well, go on. We had a situation what with our goalkeeper. Hoyland, we up. had a situation with our goalkeeper this season. I admit it, no problem. Oh, the manager brought in. But, but yes, no problem. But the vision and the idea of that and what he was trying to do with it, you can all see and it makes perfect sense and it will come into fruition and he's been doing okay right now. Okay, he will get better. The thing is, though, or he could be, or, or, or like Pep, or like Pep, who also has gone to treble level, had a Bravo oh, sign. You have to stop comparing him to these gaffers. He had, he had a Bravo sign. I'm Bravo. a comparing oh, him. He's the, the greatest Bravo. manager of all time. As a coach, no. he's the greatest coach of all time. Jurgen Klopp was winning Bundesliga with Borussia Dortmund. He was going to Champions League finals with Borussia Dortmund. He was slapping up Jose's Real Madrid 4-2 as Signal Iduna oh, Park no. in Champions League. Eric Ten Hag bottled the UCL semifinal to Mauricio Pochettino, who was his backup in the managerial search. That's what he's done. These guys are all-timer managers. Eric Ten Hag is not an all-timer manager, nor will he ever be an all-timer manager. Mikel Arteta, who is a novice in this game, by the way, because we want to compare him to Arteta. Mm. Arteta got his coaching badges like five years ago. Ten Hag was coaching a decade ago. Yet Mikel Arteta, in his third year at Arsenal, got was was actually performing. He even won a cup in his first six months, by the way, because we can't lose a trophy argument because Arteta won a trophy mm. just as quick as Eric Ten Hag. Six months in, he won the FA Cup. Ten Hag, six months in, won the Carabao Cup. Okay, he may have finished eighth, but he also walked into a worse squad mm -hmm. at Arsenal than Manchester United did with Eric Ten Hag. That was the worst squad. He had to alienate the big things. But what did Arteta show to us? He showed us that he had the cojones. He didn't like certain guys. That's He's like, my get issue. out of my squad. Yeah. And the club backed him. If Eric Ten Hag, who was meant to have the club back and stuff like that, Johnny. he had to beat him. Ronaldo. There was a sense of direction, though, with these. He's done, he's these done, done, and by the way, and by the way, you said him. third Ronaldo season. Made the for him. You said third season that Arteta started to get these cojones and all this. But he's so, a novice. Is it just going to be not, Ten Hag's third season next but season? He's a novice. But Arteta was a novice. 
you we yeah. talk about learning on the job, you talked about Ted Hogg learning on the job. Or Ted was a definition of actually needing. Ted Hogg got way more XP. Arsenal was his first professional job. Arte- Ten Hag Arteta managed Arteta at a 100. European level. He managed a European giant, so he should already be knowing the job. Champions League, and no, it's, who would have a better understanding of the Premier League, Arteta or Ten Hag, when Ten Hag first comes in? Who what? would have in 2022? Coach, as soon who's, who's as experienced coach, as soon as Ten Hag stepped into the job, his first day, his first match. Who has more experience of the Premier League and understanding of the Premier League? As soon as Ten Hag jumps in the league, Arteta. Or Ten Hag? Why can't you say that with Preston? All right, so then there you go. There you go. No, 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 no. But if Eric Ten Hag and Arteta both started in 2019, for example, the same year, Eric Ten Hag Hag should have more of of experience because he's actually been a coach at the first team level for a And Griggs, and he questioned Pep saying Pep made mistakes and all that. He's been watching the Prem, bro. (laughs) He's been watching the Prem. We're acting like no one watches. Every every single manager What about Ange? What about Ange? What about about Ange? What about Unai Emery? What about Unai Emery? No problem. I've got the answers for you, Saeed. Unai Emery, like I said to you, I believe he's got a better squad. So his implementation of his squad from the mid block position, which Griggs, even though he's going like this, Griggs agreed with it. <laughs> even though he's going like this, Griggs agreed with the mid block system and that and the fact that the profile, the player profiles, and that mid block system is a you know. different job. Uh, Griggs is never losing. And it. then he said, "Ange, where is Ange? Where is he? he's he's not he's not winning anything in his first season. He's not winning anything in his first season, and he has a better group of footballers." When you look at the squad, machine for and machine. And Man United. Then Man wow. United. Wow. Oh, okay, wow. Let's do that. Let's wow. No, let's look at wow. that. Yeah. Then yes. what, then no, what no, did Ten no, Hag no, no. get? What did Ten Hag do with his 450 mil? <laughs> Go on, go what? on. I want right on. Let's, 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 let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's, let's do it. Side. Yeah, Rabbi, yeah, Rabbi. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, okay, okay. So, Son Hun Min, I would argue, yes, <laughs> that he's getting to my United team. Would Timo Werner get into my United team? No. <laughs> what, what, right uh, now, currently? Shit. Is he, is no, he, he, no Saeed, you don't need to do Saeed. Let, let Marcel read it out and explain it to us one by one. Yeah, okay, okay, is, okay. You, <laughs> you, Marcel, you said to me who would get into the my, my United team out of all of this. You go by one by one, say to him who would get into our team Son. one by one. Son, who, who, Son, Son would definitely get into the yeah, team. Yeah, I'll take James Son. James Madison, Ooh. James Madison, Udogi. I would take Kulusevski. That Vicky Mandevi, that's one, two... Three, like three man. Four. No, I've got four. Madders, Son, yeah. Udoki, oh, Van well. and Van de Ven. Is them or oh, Papa Saw? Why not? So you're saying four Yo, man, five man makes a whole Scott. difference. Saw, to, was, five man. That's Saw. Basuma, six yeah. man. Basuma. Okay. Well, well, I see where you're going. Footballers, and and you could and somebody else in the comments might even give you a seventh. But I've given you six footballers there. You might have a point there, secretly. I know. I know I do. Right? Well, oh, okay. But then again, you have to say that who's leaving, who's leaving, who's leaving. Bear who's leaving? Bear Spurs have a, be- Spurs have a better team. starting eleven than us. Spurs have a better no, 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 starting I'm eleven than us. No, no, I'm just saying. Yeah, but you know what the issue is, though. though. He backs a manager. No, but this is what I don't get, though. He backs a manager who brought a lot of these players in here, but then he wants, do you know what I mean, the manager to stay when he... Is having this impact on the team. He's playing certain players in these positions. So where does it come down to, Marcel? You either back this manager or you back the player. It has to be one or the other. No, no, no. I'm I'd sorry. Back, no, no. I back Manchester United Football Club first and foremost. So always, and that will always be the case for me, side. So I'm looking at our guy, Nuridin. I'm look. He taught three years ago. Nuridin opened my yeah. eyes to look beyond manager and squad. Three years ago, four years ago, something like Nuridin. that. So I'm looking at this. The structure of this, <laughs> it's not right for a manager. It's not been like that. You, know you know what's bad about all of this year? You know what's bad about all of this year? Last year, this summer, they brought in Van der Ven, Udoji, and Madison as their key kind of like free players yeah, they yeah. brought in here. Yeah? And they become a better team for it. Yeah. Can we all agree with that one? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Most like, of the team, oh, I see where it goes, by the way. Their director of football was in jail this summer, by the way. Parrot TJ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Daniel Lee is out, by the way. But you know what? You know what's happened here. Yeah? Also, they were they were fourth, I think, for a while, and then obviously they they threw away. Their manager was awful, was playing bad football. But what's happened is a manager's come in and changed the philosophy, changed the team, made teams play, made players play better. Now he's now getting a rhythm out of this team. He's now getting more out of these players. The manager has instilled. Coaching, you see, um, Tottenham when they came to Old Trafford, Marcel. Yeah, do you know who played in that team? 
Can you can you explain to me who played? Oh, yeah, that's team? a good point. Um, yeah. I might have to bring it for you. Tottenham yeah. versus Manchester United. Let me just bring that team for you. A lot of those Tottenham, players weren't there. A lot of those players weren't there, by the way. Just, Manchester United versus Tottenham. Just, just two, while you're doing that, Saito, can I just say that? No, 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 no. Well, actually, I'm going to bring the team up for you. Let's do this first. Let's do this. First. Let's do this first. You know, listen, like I said to you, yeah. These, these are very... United probably got their first team, barring a couple of players, you know what I mean? A couple of players that were missing in that aspect. But most of this team, you know what I mean? It's not too bad. Could be worse. Could have Luke Shaw there and Lissandro. But Evans hasn't been that bad this season, you know what I mean? Mm. But majority of players, they're in there, right? Okay, cool. Look at the Tottenham team for you. Let's Flipping see, yeah? heck. By the way, Van der Ven, Van der Ven's in there. Padre Paro, good call. Two of the players that midfield. I would, would take, you take that midfield? Okay. Would you take that attack? Would you take that midfield on and their attack? Yes or no? Never. Do you know what? Never. <laughs> Never. Well, well, let me. Where's that midfield? Let's see. Let's see our midfield again. Because Hoiberg or Benton Cole look like something that could replace one of our two midfielders. And Ericsson, for sure, you would might take. You would want to replace one of their midfielders for Ericsson. And who's that? The, the majority. Forward, majority. I'd say the back five is cool. I would. I would. Oh probably my days, and Vicario. That's a seventh player. Yeah, that's what I'm Vicario's really oh, good. Vicario over Hoiberg. Onana. Over Onana. Yeah, because you did say who would I want to take. Because I'm just going back to what we was doing before. Bro, you, just said, you just said you just said what you're happy not. with Onana. Bro, what's this guy flip flopping, man? You just no, said you're happy with Onana. No, I'm not flip flopping. I'm just you know when we were just talking about how many world club, how many players would you take or whatever. I'm I'm just, better, you know, is actually a very he's been fantastic this season in terms of top class goalkeepers. But so you're still happy with Onana, though. You're still happy. Yes, you're yeah. not you're not discontent. So let's just yeah. keep that for example now. Yeah. yeah so sorry, we're yeah. only saying we're keeping. Four players out there, yeah. maybe Benton Cobb, but the rest of them there, you wouldn't mm. take, would you? But yeah, like I said to you, they came, they didn't have five starters in their team. Five stars. Madison, uh, Basumo, uh, Son was in that team. Son was there. Johnson, about, is Johnson and Werner yeah. better than Ganacho? Are they better than Ganacho right now, currently? Are they better footballing no. players? Then no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say they're I'm better. Taking well, I'm taking Hoyland, Ganacho, and Rashford over them free any day, man. Them free. No, I'm just saying. I'm, not, I'm talking about specifically though, Ryan. I'm saying, would you replace Ganacho, Alejandro at 18, 19, no, for no. 38, no. 38 games, and replacing with either Brendan or no. Timo Werner? No, 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 no. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. I wouldn't. Yeah, I you wouldn't. would. You would. You would. You would. Personally. No, I just no. I just wanted to see someone's perspective on it. I don't think I, I'm not no, going to no, say I, I would. No, but would you? Would you? Do, would you? Oh, no, no, would you? no, 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 no. But I just want that. Brendan seems saying. like somebody I'm that they 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 have, they, they have not for me, though, like complained. They yeah, Cooley, but Cooley wasn't there. They played the same way as well, and they they dominated for large parts of that game. And that's what, yeah. That also, to so answer that part, you got the yeah. first bit right. Cool, they got a lot of star players, but yeah. when they didn't have those players, why did they still play better than us? Then, yeah, yeah. So I was, so I was going to say that before, like when we were saying, "Oh, come to mm. later," but the, the reason, so player profiles is a massive effect on how you implement your system. It really is, guys. If you've got twenty five players that are on the same page or on the got the same ability level, you're easy, it's the process of implementing the garden is set. Basically, what yeah. I said earlier. Okay. Yeah. So then, so that's that. But for me, the reason why they're easier, play, they just lost their mate. Like they only had one world class player in, in my mind before back in the day, Harry Kane. And once you lose that one player, it's now about the team. That's the first thing that that manager went and said in the presser, by the way. He said, listen, this is a great thing, you know, that Harry Kane's gone. Essentially, that's what he said. You know, they were saying, what's going to happen to your football, this, that. He's like, there's a chance for this to become a team now, a whole unit of footballers. Because, you know, they're, they're, who he was playing, they, they, if, if Harry Kane wants to go in the 10 and pick up the ball deep, he gets, someone has to, they wait for him until he runs into the box and then they cross the ball and then he scores. It's like the gate, the team was built around Harry Kane to its T. So you had to have a load of competent players that could that were very similar to be able to bring Harry Kane into the game, into the forward line. So it's not so mishmashy as it was at Man United, if that makes sense, where we've got this kind of profile, that kind of profile, this player, that player, and they're all not even that good. So I just feel like that process... Did we have the league, best defence in the league last season? Yeah, we did, I think. I no. think we actually did. Well, one of the best defenders. Third, third, third. We, had, defense. Defense. we kept, we kept, we kept the like, clean sheets or something. We had the third. Well, my last is after the year, by the way. So don't you rate those players like Varane? The, the, the Varane and Litra, and then the back four that we had, yeah, don't you feel like they're good enough to take the team forward or you think they're not? Where, what's no. your like, view on them? They're, they're not front foot footballers in terms of that. Okay. Varane, the Varane profile. has a load of world class footballers, and, and I think his, his his sweeper role was really good at Real Madrid, like, that kind of more. And then, you know, Martinez is good. 
I think Wan is brilliant one v one, but is he going to be able to do enough? You know, pressing oh, like how Griggs was saying, front line pressing, going into he's just not going to mm. be able to do all of that side. We need a Hakimi or somebody. And then the left side, Luke Shaw is a left sided centre back now. For the rest of his career, he should be a left centre back at, at this point. Back, mm. back three, not a back three, not a back four. Mm. Okay, okay. Let me just get a couple super chats in, involved yeah. here. Rhino, I believe injuries have robbed us of so many of, of maybe three or four wins in the Premier League. That's why I'm more impatient. I give you Liverpool for example, 22-23 season. Gabby says Marcel thoughts on Eric Ten Hag are delusion of a I don't know what that is. Yeah, Matt think we've seen yeah. Eric Ten Hag footy over 90 minute game. Indefensible. Sacking is upon us, boys. Big up Talipenio against the Griggs. We should meet face to face in the big apple. I will Rebuttal all of your argument. Right, he lives in New York. You'll get some say less. Far, you know me. Don't, exactly. Don't want um, Spurs, 100% having a better 11 than us, but I need to know why I bopped your manager with the team yeah. missing Son, Madis, Kulu, Basuma. That was my bigger point. It wasn't nah, about... We got your... it's Second two, half, it's embarrassment. Second half, we got... They bopped us, man. Me bopped. personally, it was in my two, opinion. Two, you know what? It, it, they bopped us, man. It's like it's like the, 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 the Man City game, bro. It was it was it was three one, but should have been more. You know what I mean? And, and it could have been more. You know what I'm saying to you? So that's that an example. But listen, we got that's, Everton tomorrow. Aside quickly to that super chat that Alipino said that we've been robbed. If you add up three more wins, we're still fifth. <laughs> we're still fifth, bro. <laughs> we go from six <laughs> to oh, fifth. That Liverpool argument, <laughs> by the way, that Liverpool argument is so weak because you know what yeah. Liverpool did the year before that. They were fighting for a quadruple. So Skirtle and expected, Klein and that. Nathaniel Klein. And that. It was expect it was expected Oi. for Liverpool to actually regress the what year the after fuck? because they fought for quadruple. Yeah, Malas is out for pretty much. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yo, Malas is yeah. out for the season, man. Fuck yeah. it. No, man. Nah, this guy needs to be sold in the summer. I don't give a shit, bro. Yeah. I'll be honest yeah. with you, man. Sell this guy in the summer, Sad, man. Apparently, man, Ten Hawk said, the, Ten Hawk said that the medical team told him that he was gonna be fit in January. That's why he. That's why they terminated Regulon's loan. Well, apparently they lied to you me. Them, man? Why do you believe them? I mean, like it's crazy. Man, I've heard a lot of things about this. this I mean, they're thing, your medical still. staff, so you have to believe them. They're, that's their job. Yeah, but the thing is, though, it's not a bit. It's not been a good record with the medical staff. Like you should have just stuck to your guns and said, you know what, we'll keep it for the rest of the season. I'm sorry, not, if, not that if we had Regulon, our season would be any different. By the way, not like that. We would be any better if Regulon was still here. We'll still be shit. But anyway. Yeah, oh, but yeah, big like, up Kells as well. He said that if my um, um and big up um, what's his name as well? His, his name's em Empty Something, Empty Pockets, I think. And big up Kells, they were on my show the other day. He said that if Marcel and Ty did a show together, we'll call it MT Thoughts. <laughs> 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 oh my days. I said, I'm going to tell my son next time I see him. Shout out, Ty, though. No, no, that, that Tyra Malassia one. Rhino. Yeah, I'm too bad for <laughs> You know what's mad, though? No, this Malassia one is strange, bro. It's very, very strange, yeah, man. I've been hearing that a lot of things, life. but I, yeah, it's mad still. It's it has to be an ACL. He had to have done his ACL. That's the only injury that you can really suffer. Like, it has to be a lower leg injury. Personally, from what really I've heard, bad. Griggs, it's not his fault, in it, basically. That's what I'm going to say. No, no, he got, he got a bot surgery. Fault, he got a bot yeah. surgery because he trusted, he trusted outside doctors and it got clipped. That is why you yeah. just go to the doctors here and you just get the doctor and you true, get it done. True, true. As as I that. wanted you to say it, not me. <laughs> Bro. I mean, it, got, it came out. It came out that he botched the surgery. So oh, is it out? Is it out? Okay, okay. Yeah, I'm got, not sure. He got released yeah. that the surgery got botched. So it got dropped yeah, on yeah, the yeah, so That's what I'm saying. It's techie, man. Yeah, Messi, Mount Messi as well, man. Come back, yeah. He could come back when the season's done because next week our season could be over. We need deep it. Oh, yeah, Said, I've got one more question for Marcel. Yeah, sorry, sorry, yeah. So now Go we've on. got 10 games left. Yeah, yeah. What is the positives you can take from this? Because this is re reality hit me. When I was mm. thinking, you know what? What positivity can... It, what's, the po what's the possibility of pos positivity right now in 10 games? What can happen in these last 10 games? Oh, realistically. realistically. There's 30, 30 mm. points to play for, I think, still. Um, mm. You know, uh, fourth place is still in the hunt. Fifth place as well. It's still there. It's still there. It just it, it requires <laughs> it requires a degree of of consistency uh, right now. Really mm. and truly, it's still in the hunt. Um, I think if if he gets Europe, then then he's definitely still in the job. You know that includes the Europa League, and and I mm. think there's there's still a charge on the trophy. He has to look at these next. Three out of thirty, weeks. how much do you think we're getting out of that thirty points? Wow. Realistically, based mm. on everything that 
taken everything into context. How much yes. do you, how, how many points do you think we can get? I, I, I put out a tweet maybe and I had it pinned and I think Saeed told me to take it down and I think I have <laughs> since Saeed told me to take it down. But it was about how many... Saeed, have you goes... got the list of our next fixtures? Sorry, then you can go to what I'm you're right saying. Here. I'm okay. right here. Oh, yeah. 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 So, so Saeed told me to take down the post because I had said it maybe a little while back before yeah. our City game that there was a four, there was a lot of, like the four teams in and around top four all have six pointer games against each other um, kind of thing. Okay. That's the tweet so I had it pinned. Drop. Yeah, so, so a lot of teams in and around us are going to drop big amount of points. And if you can collect maybe, you know, 15 to 20, maybe 25, in anywhere from 15 to 25 points, it, it could get you that four, four, fifth. Or, or United, fifth need four. Least, United need 25 to get top four, in my opinion. They need 25 out of 30. Not, yeah. By the way, by the way, yeah. Um, he says here, look at, look at um, Ten Hag. He's come out here with a comment basically saying, I think if you look at Liverpool, example, Liverpool is a good example. Last year they had the same injuries and they couldn't deal with it as well. It's not wrong. So it's not wrong. Mm. No, no, no. But this one mm. use the word context. Mm. You have a you have a manager and a club that b- before those injuries were fighting for a quadruple the year before, getting ninety plus points in the Premier League in a Champions League final and won two trophies in that same year. Two years before that, they won the Premier League. The year before that, they won the Champions League. So they had they had what's it called? evidence to show that they can bounce back and they were working issues. crazy it's hard you're right yeah and it's still really cross at the I end have not, <laughs> anyway. i have seen nothing from eric <laughs> right, to prove to me that even with a yeah, fully fit rush. squad that he can compete again for, you're acting that like last season didn't exist there griggs he's so last year was an overachievement the so last year was an overachievement and this was and he was with a fully healthy team then what was actually going to happen with the fully healthy team and Marcel, on top Bro. of that how did liverpool nearly catch up to us based on the fact that the yeah, seasons before that the they were pushing season, at that high level like four points behind us by and the they nearly caught us their players should be tired as well mm. they've been competing and, for and how and many that years same team with injuries by the way that same team with injuries slapped us up 7-0 7 0 7 0 yeah we last season Speak about it. played the astronomical amount of football matches and and kind of declined towards the end of the season. But you've seen what he can produce within a season, Tenor. So how can you say that this season, with mitigating circumstances, I, I really think that should be like a real thing now. We should all be able to accept that this season has been capitulated because of the injuries. Yes, we I haven't. No, I don't think agree. so. You know, I'll be able to agree. I don't. I don't. I, don't I slightly it's, agree. It's one of the reasons. There's multiple reasons. It's not. Yeah, yeah there's multiple reasons. That's what I'm saying. Cut. It's one of. Yeah. But you're making it the reason as to why the, the, the whole. You know what's mad? Yeah, the whole title of the video is yeah, our injuries an excuse for my United's downfall. So are you saying now? Injuries are an excuse for my United's downfall. Yes or no? Please. No, 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 no mm. explanation. Say yes or no. Wow. That's that's really horrible thing to, to, to force me to, <laughs> to produce words that I don't really agree with. <laughs> no, no, that's no, a really please, horrible please. thing. Because I'm, I'm going like to say yes. I'm going to say yes. I'm going to circumstances. That's a complete, you know. No, no, please, better please. Enough with the yes, right now, right now, if you can check what mitigating circumstances means. Please, please, please. Uh, yes or no. Yes or no. I know what it means. Please, yes or no. Yes or no. Yes or okay, no? Okay, yes, yes, it is part of their downfall, yes. But I don't, but, but you see when you use the word, there's so much power in that word excuse, because it's like, excuse has got a negative tonage to it. It's not negative, it's a real thing, it's a mitigating Let's let, let me read it out for you. So mitigating circumstances, I know the meaning anyway, but it's mm. nice to put in there for context. Mitigating circumstances are any serious circumstances beyond your control, which may have adversely affected your academic performance. These include, but are not limited to, medical conditions, person, personal yeah. and domestic circumstances, accidents and incidents. Yeah. Thank you, man. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate it. And, yeah. and, and, and that's better than it's saying it's an excuse, yes or no. That's so horrible for you to do that to me, Said. You're just pushing me in this excuse one. I don't believe in that. because I, you know, I, so I, I agree. I agree. agree. Like, there is a possibility that, that a lot of it's going against his way, but I still feel like I'll, I'll still want to see some right better. Now. Rhino, his mm. in-game management is poor and his talent mm. ID is poor. I can throw oh, blame in his di- I can throw blame in his direction, but I'm not gonna mm. get rid of him because of that. That can be improved. You know, the club mm. can improve. I, I knew King Howie would come, man. I knew King Howie would come to save you. Big up Marcel and the whole panel. I really don't understand how we expect to be doing really well in the circumstances. Bro, look at our squad, key position side, injuries in key positions. But you know what's mad, yeah? What about the Manchester Derby? What about a day when you had one of your best defenders on the pitch and you decided to play Lindelof at left back and Evans in the middle 
and then you, you, you we lost three nil. There's been situations where the manager in the Manchester derby played McTominay in the central role and put Bruno Fernandes in this free role or whatever it is. He basically did that to himself. Same, he was him, when he could have played Ahmad. You know, there's been situations this season where Gainacho's better on the right, but then he plays him on the left. You know, Saeed, what Saeed, else is that? I can keep going on. Keep going Saeed, on, you on, was on, there. on, 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 Saeed, Saeed, you was there. And, and against... Ch- so and please against explain Man- that, King Howie. Against, against Man City Football Club, we should have been 2-0 up. Scott McTominay had two chances before they get their penalty shout and all these kind of things. So if we have, Rashford, you mean Rashford, Rashford, you mean? Oh, you're, no, are you no, talking, about, are you talking about, about? I'm talking about home. City. I'm talking about home. At home, we should have beat City, and at way we should have been up ahead of City. Uh, no, what about Man City when they had? Oh, 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 sure. Yeah, I hear what you're saying, Chris. I hear what you're saying, Chris. Let me take that back. But Yo, you know, what you're saying, the opportunity to be ahead was yeah. much more powerful in both football matches in Manchester United Football Club favour. Somebody argue with me that. It, it just that's the not that's a reality, you know, in both situations. So if we upregulate the quality of the squad. Then we could be defending. Oh, we can say that, but the thing is, though, you don't like admitting that when United should have lost games, where Luton Town, Villa, the amount of games where we should have lost, oh, yeah, the but in around. spite of that, we still win. So that could be a situation where I feel like it could work the other way. So that's why I don't look yeah. at it like that. I'm looking at it over a whole course of the oh, game. I'm not, I'm not where... gonna lie, by the way, I don't think the Manchester Derby's are the games that we have to look at tech- how tactically because I think those are two different games. Because Marcel talks about we talk, we need to talk about the games that he should have been front footed in. But we haven't been able to capitalize within our front footed approach. Games like Bournemouth, games like okay. the dead teams. Sheff- yeah. By the way, against Sheffield away, by the way, we are the only big team in the league that has struggled against Sheffield this year. Every other team has given them a whooping. Yeah, for us, we had to go machine versus machine for against Sheffield United. Yeah. Are we gonna blame the players for that too? Or are we gonna blame the tactics? Because I it's saw a long that- ball. I saw long ball FC against Sheffield United, by the way. Yeah, I know I, I agree with that, but I think was that a 4 2 3 1 and that was the, the low top corner last minutes? Yes. Yeah. I think yeah. it was a 4 2 3 1 as to. Uh, and, and was it in and around the Bruno era, um, the Burnley game? The Burnley yes. game. That game as well, I have an issue against. I have an issue with that game. Why are we playing low block against Burnley? That is the game where Ten Hag needs to play front footed in. And no matter what the players don't follow the instruction, you tell uh, them we have to Sheffield assert our United. dominance in that kind of game. That's no. the game that you have to assert yourself. You are the bigger club. Yeah, I know, I know. City. So that's that's the taking the next step, even uh, against these mediocre teams, by the way, Griggs. But it's like it's a thing where we were low on confidence in and around that era. I think there was a there was a quite a bit of injuries as hit as well in that era, in, in and around that time. Scott McTominay's playing, all these footballers told their surplus to requirements and can't play the front foot football, by the way, Griggs. So it's like Tenog has to deal with that. And then he goes to okay, let's just con- play the conservative football, especially against Burnley, especially against Full uh, not Fulham, uh, Burnley, Sheffield, or Brentford. It was like, let's just play the conservative football again, get the structure right, and just try and get some results. Cause I haven't got they they can't operate like that. They just can't do the front foot football. Bro, my, my, yes, but that's my that's my issue. Is that at that point, that's where you have to persist with it. That's the difference for me. Why why I don't think Eric Ten Hag can make it. Those margins are why you he won't make it at a big club. At a big club, because there were three games for me that Eric Ten Hag had actually. I saw front footed. It was the Palace FA Cup game. I mean Carabao Cup game, right? But that was B squad, so we'll take it away. Yeah. The home game after that, we actually played on the front foot. Even Brentford at home, we played on the front foot. We the, the one goal we conceded was because Onana made a mistake. But other than that, we had them pinned back, right? Those yeah. kind of games, even Forrest, Forrest, we went down 2 0, but we still had them pinned back. Yeah. Those are the games for me. You persist with that. You build the foundations off that. Yes, the team may be not be maybe not uh, clicking right there, right? But you just continue with yeah. it until it clicks. You you put it into their heads. That's what a top manager does. That's what you talk about Jurgen Klopp. That's where Jurgen Klopp did at Liverpool. He's like, you're gonna press until you until your hamstrings hurt. You're gonna press until your hamstring falls off the bone. Until you get it. Mm. That's what a top manager does at a big club. That's what separates the elites from the greats, uh, from the okay and the average. That's the difference. I That's think these margins players, at a big club. Yeah, these players are not capable of getting that that temperament, that mentality, that I think it was yeah, Lucas Lego, Emre Khan. Mourinho's tried that. Mourinho's tried that. Mourinho's tried that. Mourinho's tried that. Ole's tried that with the vibes. Mourinho's tried that with the discipline. And that meant <laughs> and they can't get the tune. And even and 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 when you add new weaponry into the, into the system, and they they become like the rut. That's just how it is in life. 
and and unfortunately you'll you'll start until you get rid of those and 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 it's part it's a process it always has been in football and you have to slowly take out and put back in and and then you see even the, against Newport Marcel you think that's justifiable see, I can't I can't remember the, the the happenings of that game completely but I know I'm it was sure like we conceded game. 20 shots in that game definitely as well yeah so like, what are these players good enough at playing on the halfway line I just don't. We don't have any Newport. So though. We're not yeah, playing on the halfway, on the halfway line. line then. That's not my, my issue. We're not playing on the halfway line. Our <laughs> center backs are still defending mm. at the edge of the box. Mm. There's, there's no middle. There is no middle. There's no one on the halfway line. Right, let's, the let's, midfielders are yeah. midfielders are pressing high up. The defenders are sitting yeah. back. So you have a middle that's empty. That's why we're seeing so many shots. That's why it takes one turn from a midfielder to drive the ball into our area. 17. That's mm. the issue. Okay. Okay. So now people wanted the fixtures coming up. We've got Everton tomorrow, of course, um, in the Manchester, in, sorry, at Old Trafford. We've got, we've got Liverpool after that. Then we've got Brentford away, Chelsea away, Liverpool at home, Bournemouth away, Newcastle, Burnley, Crystal Palace, Arsenal, Brighton, Arsenal. So Arsenal twice. Oh, that's that's no, no, that's no, no, thing. Yeah, Brighton last year, Brighton last home game. Bro, listen, I don't think we're gonna win most games. I think we'll beat I'm Burnley. A lot of draws. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, we'll beat Burnley. We'll beat Sheffield United when we get to that. And yeah, everything else is it's hit and miss. You don't know what's gonna happen. You don't know what's gonna you know what's gonna go on. Yeah. You don't know anything, man. You know what I'm saying to you? So it is what it is. Big up to King Harris. I'm not excusing some of his tactical errors in games from Trish. I just think based on what I saw in the first year, he could finish his contract. But that's what I'm saying. Based on new evidence, though, King Howie, he's re we've realized he ain't good enough. Everything's yeah. based on new evidence. I was Ten Hag yeah. in until the Man City game. And I said, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Yeah. Because I just saw a guy who was playing against his principles and he was playing in a coward way. He was a coward. And I don't like that. And I think um, for Saeed, yeah. um, and on, on that point as well, I think credibility is built on trust. And you know how long it exactly. takes to build trust, but how quick it can be broken down with, with something very small. So I think that's definitely a factor as well. Yeah, man. Yeah. Tomorrow, have seen Marcel, the short season and he's spoiled he's a lot of it already, man. But we'll see. I, yeah. I hear you, though, Marcel. I Tomorrow. hear a lot of points you make still. Mm. I hear it. Tomorrow will be another game where it'll be a physical battle, you know. I, listen, anyone who yeah. thinks it's gonna be hmm. gonna be a walkover, Fiz if we don't you know Anana, Decore, the core is gonna know, look like Galato. prime Neymar. <laughs> <Get it up. laughs> bro. And that guy can't even shoot to save his life, he's gonna score, bro. Watch. Tomorrow he's gonna yeah. score, bro. <laughs> you know against them, um, you know against their uh, West Ham, they were unlucky, you know. They had so many chances in that game, you know. So I can't lie, man. Marcel, how do you see the game going before we wrap up? How does the game going? We're at home, the opportunity to win the game, maybe two, two, two or three one yeah. again. It's, it's if Hoyland plays, right. we win games. He's not, not there. He's not coming back to the whole game. Oh, he's not. He's not. He's not. <laughs> he's not. I'm sorry. Unfortunately, I wanted him back as well because I'm. I don't want to see Rashford flipping up front, man. It's it's actually painfully to watch. Yeah. Yeah. Side, maybe Cas on, Casemiro on, header. On. Dalo apparently, Omari Force is not. Apparently, Force is not traveling this weekend either. He's not in the squad. Yeah, if also, but come on, man. That means Ahmad to play, finally. Yeah, that means Ahmad gets more minutes, hopefully. But Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, any, 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 you, Greg, do you think it's going to be a tough game? I think it's going to be a tough game, you know, tough battle, man. It's going to be a tough uh, physical battle. I, Everton can't attack. Well, they can't attack. They just can't put the ball in the back of the net. Um, I'm going to go 1 0. We're just going to nick it off like a set piece or something. I don't know. Yeah, that's early kickoff, seven thirty a.m. That's what I'm gonna. That's why I have to wake up at seven thirty in the morning to watch. By the way, I have to watch Rashford in the nine. That's what that's what awaits for me at seven thirty in the morning oh, tomorrow. Fair play, man. Fair play to you, like in America, man. You're in New York as well. Imagine you're from LA. And nah, uh, is, yo, CK already, CK already texted the chat. He's sleeping. He don't. He don't give a shit about. He it. said it. Fair, like, fair enough. Fair he, play. Like, I'm honestly, fair play. Yeah, play, got Eddie and that, and um, yeah, Eddie and them, man, name? and anyone from Australia as well, because them man are yeah. wake up at night time, so it's even worse for them, man. So, yeah, me, uh, right, yeah, she, she, she has she to get up at 4 a.m. Sheik, big up, Sheik, but um, yo, big up, Sheik, yeah, uh, you guy, yeah, I, it's mad because Griggs added another perspective in, into it in terms of the fact that they can't finish, but. I think with United, we're just prone to just the teams that can't do things normally, they just find a way to do it. So, you know, that guy, is it Beto or whatever? You know, he might just yeah. have his, a game of his well, life, you know? 
don't concede to Ka- uh, Dominic Calvert Lewin. I swear to God, that guy's the worst striker I've seen in the Premier League. Please do not concede to him. Have some shame. No, I don't, don't know. know yeah, I can see a one nil either way or a one one draw. I'm not comfortable, yeah. man, because yeah, it's just, yeah, I just, yeah, one 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 nil game, man. Either way, oh. either way, yeah. My big up Kid Gawi, four thirty a.m. Yo, listen, yeah. solid solidarity to you, PST, man. You get me? Peak. Yeah, hundred percent. I see Fulham um, all over again. Brooklyn, big up Brooklyn, man. Nice, nice, that. um, nice area, my Brooklyn, man. man. Big up um, your average cage said they have sacked Ten Hag after he said he wouldn't play the, his style. They also they should have sacked. Sorry, should I say? Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent, KJ, hundred percent, bro. That's what it should have been. That's what it should have been. But listen, people, man, I won't be at the game tomorrow, man. You know what I'm saying, Marcel, I won't see you there. Minna's gonna be there though, so yeah, shout yeah. out, Minna. Mm-hmm. I Same can't make it, bro. I can't put any weight on this ankle. So I'm, rest I'm, up, I'm yeah, I'm gonna rest up. And salts and all them kind of. You know what, bro? I tried to order it today, man, and the fucking the guy said he weren't there, man. It asked them, bro. So I I'm imagine Side going to the game on crutches, doing his little match review at the game, saying, ah, bro, bro, waving the stick. I would, like... <laughs> I would man. But yo, I hey, can't. Go, I can't, man. Yeah. You know what it is? It's these potholes, <laughs> man. We pay tax for no reason, man. Absolutely, yeah. like it's a joke, man. So I'm just gonna rest up. But United, anyhow, they man. make me stressed out, man. With it, with with watching us, you know what I mean? It's crazy. Win, don't worry, you'll see, you'll, you'll see a good match tomorrow. Hopefully, hopefully. I'll, uh, the famous last words. Eric says, we have three <laughs> options. Get Qatar or PG or JG to work with these players or give Eric Ten Hag any manager three to five years. Big up Marcel. I enjoyed this show. Listen, people, yeah, as much as, like I said, a lot of people don't like Marcel's opinion, we have to have balance on this show. I can't have everyone agree with each other. This is what we do on this platform. Marcel brings his point of view. Like I said, it's going to be maybe tough to watch and tough to hear for some of you. <laughs> but I enjoy it, man. I enjoy the back and forth. It's what it's all about, man. It's about having different same. opinions, man. Because like I said, Healthy all have different same opinions. It's one of them where it, the show's not going to be as great, innit? you feel me? So, yeah, man, I appreciate you lot um, here. I'll be back tomorrow at 11 a.m. for the watch along. So I'll see you there. Danny, I can't lie to you. Big L today. L's in the chat for Danny. You get me? I don't know where he's been today. So big up to you. Because he said, oh, I'm going to cook Marcel. I'm going to cook Marcel. <laughs> but where are you today, bro? I swear down. He goes, yo. He goes, um, yeah, man, I want to cook Marcel and that. So I was like, cool. Say no more. But yeah, man, big up to you. And I'll see you tomorrow for the watch long. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>